There's no moment where I found out what these cops were taking. But what I knew was that something was going on. I, I was being harassed by other cops to stop making car stops in their sector. I mean, when I say harassed, I was pulled over at gunpoint. What's up, everybody? Today's guest is Mike Dowd. One of the best guests we've ever had. You might have seen him on The 7-5. It's a documentary on Netflix about his time as a cop in East New York in the 1980s and 90s. He started off trying to do the right thing, and of course, the allure of drug money roped him over to the dark side. He started to work for drug kingpins who were running East New York at the time. He would let them know when busts were gonna happen. He would help collect cash. He would even act as a bodyguard. In the early 90s, he started selling dope himself. And then in 1993, he got roped into one of the biggest federal cases cracking down on New York cops. And he got sent up to the feds for about 13 years. He got out, did his time, and now he is here to tell us about how New York has changed. And we go into politics, corruption, dope dealing. I mean, we've got it all right here. I had so much fun doing this episode. Go see more bonus footage with Mike over at patreon.com slash the connect show. Without further ado, everybody, Mike Dowd right here on the connect. I was facing life. They offered me 34 years of my first plea agreement. It was 34. 34 years? Are you serious? That's when I see the lights behind me start to flash. And I didn't even think, I just hit it. I was driving like my life depended on it. And then I parked the car, hopped out, closed the door, and I started running. And he pulls out a burner, shanks, like six inches. And then he passes it to me. And he goes, here, that's yours. Don't ever leave the cell block without this. He was the reason I made it out of that place alive. Mike Dowd, Michael Dowd, uh, former New York, New York, one of New York's finest. Should I shed the glasses for you? No, I is? like it. I yeah, like it. Uh, I what could. do you have? Do you have good Irish blue eyes? No, oh, you I didn't get the baby. You didn't the get the baby blues. No, but they're beautiful, like brownish. Take the glasses <laughs> off. Take the glasses off. Let let you us sure? let the audience see oh, the, the man, right. the man that you've become. Yeah. So you are uh, you were one of the dirtiest cops in New York City in That's the seventies and eighties. So you're the best kind. Yes. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, no, it, didn't, I, it didn't land me well. But I mean, look, every every drug dealer, every street person back in those days w w needs a guy like you, yeah. because they're going to survive on the street. Yeah, five times as long. Absolutely. If they got the law in their pocket. Yeah. What years? What were a you business in? decision. <laughs> no, that, that's a right? business model. Did you ever know? We have a friend. We've had him on this podcast. He goes by Unique. Yes, he's from Harlem. I, think I know Unique. Yeah, black, super black Unique. Jamaican I guy. I spoke to Unique. I haven't met him, but we've spoken on the phone. Oh, dude, you got to meet this guy. Yeah. He is from a different time, dude. This guy was making five million dollars yeah. a week. Yeah, yeah. That kind of huh. that yeah, kind of money. That's that's, what, that's when keys. That's when you're moving a hundred bricks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every no, two days, yeah, kind of. No. Yeah, right? but no, he was he had couldn't make that kind of money selling bricks. Not today. No, no, he couldn't do it. He had to be selling pieces. No, no, no thousands no. and thousands of pieces. Well, he was he was getting them. He he was dealing basically directly through his business partner with the Kali cartel. Yeah. So he was getting them for about eight, right. flipping them for ten. Yeah. But he was doing that two hundred times a week. So yes. maybe two million dollars. Yeah, a week, yeah. You know? But I listen. But he, the most of the money is made at the ground level. Okay, totally. That's totally. how the money is made. However, the guys are going to make. Large amounts in one day, right? Guys going to make three, four hundred thousand in one day, where a guy's got to hustle and he's going to he's going to make a million in a day. But he's going to do twenty four hours and nonstop. Yeah, he's got to run a crack. He's got to have five thousand clients, ten thousand totally. clients. Totally. This guy only needs two. Right. So right. that's exactly. He's dro he's dropping fifty bricks off to this guy from right. DC. He's right. dropping twenty off to this Correct. guy in Queens and Correct. another twenty to this guy in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Unique. I know. I know. I I've spoken to Unique on the phone. Within the last year, I just can't remember what the conversation was about. <laughs> Nothing to do with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think He's, it was the entertainment stuff. Probably, or, probably. I, 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 was he hooked up with uh, Eric Adams? Did, did he never mention he's got a relationship? The with mayor? That? Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't know. I, because they, they were trying to get a bunch of guys to get together that had done things in the past yeah. to come out and like be community spokespeople now that they turned their lives around. Right. It's know? it's pretty insane how many criminals come out of that era that are connected to politicians yeah, yeah. now. Deep. Eric Adams knew who are the kingpins out of Queens? Yes, it's Supreme. The Supreme team. He yeah. was like yeah. grew up with those yeah, guys, yeah. you know? I know. Um, I know. 
So <laughs> you know, <laughs> none of that, none of that. We're gonna get that out. Well, there's no, there's no keeping it under your yeah, breath. No, we, we're right. an open book it's, here. It's all right. So you grew up in Brooklyn? No, I was born in Brooklyn. I was I left there three and a half years old. Moved out to Brentwood. We call Brent Hood, Long Island. And yeah. it was Hood out there? No, it wasn't then. It is now. <laughs> it is. Well, well, actually, it's got, actually got, it's gotten pretty. You know, and I hate to say this because this is a non-political show, <laughs> but since Trump got rid of MS13 out there, yeah. the neighborhood like like. Like you can, it, it did a hundred and eighty degree switch. It was, it's really so it's coming back. So it's coming back oh, really okay. good, really okay. nice. I mean, I grew up in it, and I wouldn't have been welcomed back in it ten years ago. Today, it's like it's like lollipops in East New York when it was before it turned back again. Yeah, you know right, when right, it started right. getting cleaned up mm-hmm. nice, and then you know, now it's starting to fade back. Yeah, into yeah, its yeah. Old ways. But it was big, huge, huge difference. And, and are cops? Do you have cops in your family? So. I probably have eight to ten law enforcement cousins, uncles, you know, two brothers, things like that, you know. Wow. So, but not no more. Not, they we're all we're old guys now. Everybody's retired. We're old school now. Everybody's retired. Yeah, we're all G's now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and before every cop in New York was black, female, Puerto Rican, Dominican, right? Nothing wrong with that. No. Cops in New York City were Irish. Well, Irish, some Italian, we let them in. <laughs> sure. We had to. We had to because we were banging nail girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do, bang yeah, your yeah, girls? Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't we bang. Switch. You yeah. can't bang an Irish the woman. and the Jets, right? Was, what was that about? Something, I forget. <laughs> yeah. um, and, no, they were in church. The Bolton church. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But, but that is why, you know, Colin Quinn, the great Irish comedian, he says I, the Irish become cops because of the church, because there is this... Uh, discipline. This discipline yeah. to a higher power, right. authority, right. right? This hierarchy. The service. Totally. The service. Um, and the Italians do it to get organized connections. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I mean, let's be real. <laughs> so, so you, but you adopted a lot. We from, have an Italian guy who's <laughs> in his sixties or fifties, and and did he go to the police department? They didn't want me. That my family begged against it. And the Irish family are like, go three more, add them on. And the Italians like, don't you dare. <laughs> right, right. It was just no, 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 insane. No, no. Italians, they, they if they weren't involved in it, they knew somebody involved in it. Mm-hmm. They just couldn't help themselves couldn't back help then. You just too couldn't close. help themselves. Too close. But it's, you, like, it's like being Irish. And do you have a cop in your family probably probably probably, probably. probably. so how <laughs> but you really i mean clearly as we know now from the documentary from history you adopted a lot from the italians you adopted a lot from the street guys well you know the difference between an irishman and an italian is is like the color of their hair you know most of the time mm. because as we grew up in brooklynese brooklyn guys yeah. we all grew up basically the same yeah you know, uh, we went to the same churches for the most part. We intermingled, we intermarried. So, I mean, if you come to my house, you're going to get as good an Italian sauce. They call it gravy. We still call it sauce in the yeah. Irish sauce. You're going to get as good a sauce in my house as you're going to get in an yeah. Italian house. It's just that's the way, because right. we just, we intermingled so well. Even though we always had that Italian Irish competition, mm. competitiveness, mm. you're a Guinea, you're a Mick. It yeah. was just the way it was right. when we grew up. But we actually, that was, it was love. Yeah. In, in many ways, mm-hmm. in many ways, it was yeah. respect. I could do that to my Italian friend, Colin McGinney, and he called me a, mic- a minute later, and we'd be playing ball together. Yeah, so it wasn't, exactly, it wasn't like that offensive. Everything is offensive today. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So, did but did you have any ambitions? When did you join the force? What year? Um, so I didn't want to be a police officer. Go figure. Right. Uh, but it came up cro- it, when you're Irish. It just comes like it just shows up. Again. Right. Right, it's like a Jew, sh- a Jew, yeah, you're going to become a lawyer. A, a lawyer, a jeweler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, Doctor, a Jew. Jew and a jeweler. Right, my mother's a Jew. Hey. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Is she happens. really a Jew? Yeah, my mother's Jew. Oh, so you're a Jew. Yeah, no way. Wait, Mike Dowd is a Jew? He's partly, yeah. Get the you're f- out of here. I cannot believe this. Yeah, I'm a shiver. Wow, oh my God, you're Jewish God. No, so we were raised oh. Irish Catholic. My mother was actually... The, my mother was a sad life, but a wonderful woman. You know, she turned out, God bless her, she's still running. Um, wow, really? Yeah, she, yeah, she, uh, she was put in like a, a home uh, as a child. Uh, she was raised by nuns, you know, so we were raised Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had that whip out from the day we were born. Sure, sure. <laughs> Just the bloodline, I guess, yeah. is Jewish. Hey, guys, let me take a minute to shout out Prize Picks. It's football season. Do you like firing on action every Sunday as much as I do? Prize picks is the most fun I've ever had, winning up to 25x my money. You just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats, and place your entry. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. And check this out if you're really into it, you got to know this. With Prize picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play 
even if one of your players gets hurt, which is big, especially during the NFL season, right? If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. That's big, you guys, okay? Head over right now to prizepicks.com slash connect and use code connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, for a first deposit match up to $100. I love this. I love this. I personally am not a huge sports fan, but putting action down on the games keeps me engaged with the NFL every Sunday. And this is a great way for the expert or the casual sports fan to really come up this football season. Again, head over to prizepicks.com. Use that promo code connect to get a hundred dollars matched on your first deposit and go have fun guys. Thank you to prize picks. Let's get back into the episode. Right. So you didn't want to become a cop, but you know, you're, you got 10 uncles and cousins and brothers that are all cops. It was, this the, is it was kind of what way. you do. It was a path. And it it's a, if there were lawyers in my house, I may have been a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, and that's, you know, it's a good city job, especially back then. Mm -hmm. You know, you raise a family, you buy a it house out stability. in Queens. It was stability, it was stability right? Yeah. You take your yeah. civil service you test. You weren't going to be loaded, right. but you'd pay your bills on time and you'd get a vacation once a year. Yeah. And that's how we were raised. Yeah, exactly. Simple. This is when Simple. there were still working class white people in New York City. And Correct. that's what you did. You took your civil service test, right. became a fireman, you became yeah. a cop, yeah. whatever. Right. Um, and now this is Dominicans and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of Dominicans. Totally, no, and, absolutely. Puerto Ricans even, they, they've moved on. They've moved on, they, too. They've been here so long, they're, too. They're so high up, uh, yeah. you know, they're highfalutin. I, don't, don't disrespect, but they got, wow. they're up a cut now. Puerto you know? Ricans are highfalutin? They're up a cut. Someone didn't tell me that. They're up a cut. <laughs> Come on, they're up a cut. So, well, did you forget? So, uh, <laughs> so you go you go in at what, 22? 21. What year is that? 1982. Okay, so so drugs are already uh, permeating every well, neighborhood. It's mostly it's mostly cocaine because crack hasn't crack hit quite hasn't yet. Hit yet, no, right. crack doesn't come in. Quack, <laughs> crack doesn't come in until 83, 84. Right, right, and then it hits big. Yeah. So so the 82, coke is big, but yeah, he is big. heroin is probably still uh, as big it, on the streets. Yeah, not not as not as prevalent. Just not as prevalent. Okay, so you go to work. <laughs> In the 75th precinct. So I start out in Queens, in Astoria, Jackson Heights, Corona, and then I get transferred, uh, what they call the training, the NSU, field field training, mm -hmm. they call it. I went through field training over there, and then by the time I was done with field training, which which is normally six months, but it was a year for us because the class was so big. Yeah. The, the, we, we graduated 3,800, 3,600 cops oh. graduated in one day. <sighs> so they had to train them in the field, and it took a year for them to, to get them through their training. The guys, so, so some guys are done in three months, yeah. and they hit they hit the street, right? You know, but and, and we all were in the street, by the way, but just like sort of unsupervised, you know. Now you become a cop, and you're you, you, you're seasoned at three months, you know? <laughs> right? Three right. months of training, you're seasoned. <laughs> you know? Good luck. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go right. to East New York and tell me how seasoned you are. <laughs> right, right. So you end up in East New York. Yeah, so after your training, East New York after, after my and tell training. us about East New York in 1982. So I tell the story, and I'll tell it for your audience. Yeah, it, please. So I'm driving down Sutter Avenue. And uh, it, it, In the Ghetto comes on by Elvis Presley. It's about 6.40, 6.35 in the morning, maybe 6.28. I want to be accurate because someone could go back and look at this day. It was June 13th, I believe, 1983. I'm driving down Sutter Avenue, and I have the radio on, which I very rarely listen to the radio, by the way. I usually listen to 1010 Winds News. You know, that's, that's how crazy I am. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> and uh, In the Ghetto comes on by Elvis Presley. <laughs> and I just break down in tears. I just, like, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, I'm really? in the ghetto. Here I am. And, and I'm driving down the street and in the ghetto comes on and the guy gets shot with the shotgun and the mother cries and the baby dies in the ghetto. And I look to my right and they're playing dice against a wall at mm. you, which I would come to know as Eugene's Bodega. It's 6.30 in the morning. It's, it's a Saturday morning. So Friday night, they're still out from Saturday morning throwing dice up against a wall. And I'm going, this is a little bit more than I think I'm ready for, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, like lo and lo and behold, within a week or two, I get my first murder scene. That not that I kill anybody, sorry. <laughs> but you know, I get my first murder scene. I get my first stabbing. I get you know all the action starts to come your way, and you just begin to react and you stop thinking. You're right, because because you, you're in war. Because you, you you're just there. You're blood deep. You just what do you do? You know, you just respond I, 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 like mostly as a human being would, and then you realize that you are the police. 
yeah. at the same time, you know? Right. So so you have to be in control. You have right. to run this Right. So <laughs> you you got to become a you mother. Got, you you got to be right there. You have to be you an have animal to, step up. to survive. You have to step up right yeah. there. Right. It's time to, we, I, use, I say sink or swim. It's time to sink or it's time to swim. So, you know, if you sink, you got you got to go backwards. You got to leave. If you swim, you, you're with the sharks and you got to just keep, you know, making your way through these, the waters. And Did a lot of cops the, in your graduating class that got sent to East New York just put their hands up and say, I need to transfer? Like, I can't, I can't deal with this? Um, I would say no. They I would did, say no. So they turned in, they stepped up. They all stepped up. Most of them stepped up. Some guys would find, try to find their way into different details. But most guys back then... They were they were pretty much manly men. I hate to be I yeah. hate to be a little what are you what is this called? Cops were <laughs> tough as back had then. to be man. You know you either you 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 either became tough if you weren't yeah. or you got eaten. Yeah. So are we talking? So when you talk about the sea, the st street in the city and how the guys handled it, first of all the cameras there were no cameras. There was no cameras. So you were the law and the justice right there 80% mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. it was all taken care of right there in the street right. the arrests of course if you had to right but but, but you would rather but you'd rather just justify just right. take it out right there in the street couple lumps handed out and everyone shakes hands and goes on their way <laughs> so you busted some heads when you had to yeah no never never over listen uh, we never all, overdo it you don't we kill all a guy. have overstepped at a moment i think and anybody could say that about their own life you know um so i'm not going to be i don't want to be I don't want to be here and saying I was I was Lily White. I never did. There was times I gave the extra shot or two. Well, it's because the guy hurt me or something, you know. Well, give us an example of that. Well, why? Because I the guy might be out there still. No, no, no. He's from East New York. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's, he's been dead, dead for years. Yeah. Well, so, I'll give you, so a guy gets the better of me. A big, big, jacked up dude. You know. Well, just came home. You know. Yeah. He, he just did three, four years. He's jacked. He's ripped. And I'm, I'm sort of like you, wiry, strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, it was a weight differential, angles, and all of a sudden I had one cuff on, and he, he was compliant, and then he wasn't. <laughs> so when someone's compliant, and then they're not, things don't always go well. Sure. Because I got one cuff on, now what? Right. He's got the other cuff now, right? Because he's got the one on his arm. I can't possibly control that better than he can. It's already clicked to right. his arm. So now he's pulling, and I got the other one cutting through my hand as I'm holding on. Long story short, he got a couple of lumps. <laughs> All right? In the end, we were friends. Right. Because he realized what he did was wrong, mm. and I realized that I, you know, I gave him a couple extra shots. <laughs> but you know what? That's better than cops today who get scared and pull their guns out. Yeah. They, you know? They, well, that's because today everybody's scared. Everybody's scared. Everybody's scared. And, and they wait till the last mm, minute yeah. to be physical. That's going to cause more deaths and more accidental shootings. And we're seeing it right. all the time. I mean, accidental, legitimate yeah. accidental right. or unintentional. Right. Or how's this? And I've been watching a lot of the videos. The escalation today is unnecessarily quick. So a guy gets pulled over. I saw one the other day on a video, and I'll explain it to you why I'm trying to say this. And the guy was a, a tatted up. You can see he was a moxie uh, Latino guy, but a, a big white American Latino. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like he's a, he's an American Latino, and he's got he's, he speaks white. He has no accent, so I would call him a, a, probably a Mexican American Chicano. You know, Chicano, yeah. So he's been, and he's American, and. But he's a little intimidating because he's a big dude and he's all tatted up and the cops handle him with care, like cautiousness. But the cop handled it in a way that was deprecating. And here's this guy sort of feeling punked out now yeah. by the cop. Mm. And I'm saying to myself, this isn't worth it. None of this that's going on right here is worth it for a ticket. None of this that's going to happen is worth it for a ticket. And guys got to understand that. Guys and girls in law enforcement got to understand, where are you taking this? Mm. And sure enough, it ends up in a shootout over a ticket. Because right. the guy didn't want to be compliant. And yes, oh, I smell marijuana. Oh, really? You smell marijuana? <laughs> yeah, I do all the time walking in the streets. You smell marijuana. Oh, you know, you got, someone's going to get shot and killed because you smell marijuana. Yeah. Is this worth it? Mm. It's not. Well, you know why? These cops are kids just like you were and they never been punched in the face. They never been in a fight. They didn't grow up with neighborhood right, kids. Right. That's part of the problem right. too. They're all in the house doing Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yelling at everybody on a phone. And, and they don't know how to talk. <laughs> 
They, they don't talk to each they other. So, because right. being a cop is communicating. It's 100%. like, hey, what's going you on? You have to have a level of decorum on how yep. you approach everybody, which is why on the way here, when we were welcome back from that location, I said to you, <laughs> I love the ghetto. And you said to me, I said, I just love it. It's just, and you're like, but it, I said, look, these people, they like the rest of us. Everybody's the f- same. Just treat, treat people the way you want to be treated and you're good. Mm. And there's going to be a knucklehead in any crowd. But if you treat people the way you want to be treated, look them straight on. Don't be one of these. You know, yeah. just be straight up. But to be fair, in East New York in 1983, there were more than a few knuckleheads. Well, How many murders were happening? How many well, calls about would you get? a year. But that means there's a Just thousand, in East New York. That's a thousand shootings, yeah. That's so it's every day. Every day. It's every day there's a every shooting. Day there's a sh- every, every, other every day, day there's, there's three, a- four shootings. <clears throat> And every day, every other day is a murder. Yeah. Yeah, ish. So you got used to seeing dead bodies, yeah. blood scenes. Yeah, it, it was, it just, it, 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 there's, what's it called? Non effects. What's the proper word? Affect. It's not, there's like, it just numbed you out? No effect. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. No effect. Did nothing to Did you? Did nothing. <laughs> it was absolutely nothing. Like, like the first body I saw, Trump fell off a roof in, 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 in Queens. The guy jumped off a roof, landed because he wanted to kill himself. Yeah. And he did. And I'm looking at this egghead that's over. We had some from hitting the ground, and I'm getting sick looking at this guy. You know, within two years, I'm sitting there eating spaghetti next to the guy. <laughs> with, you know, resting my resting my plate on his back while he's dead, so that I don't spill my soda. I mean, this is, that's of course I'm exaggerating a little, but not too much. But you know, that's like being watching a ranger game with the guy. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good because he japped the pole. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he had no electric, but he japped the pole from the street, so I could watch TV. I was so happy he japped the pole. But he died with a cigarette in his hand still, and the, f- <laughs> you know, ash. Yeah. The ash was burnt. Holy he died while the cigarette was still lit Holy because the ash burnt out in his hand. He got shot. <laughs> yeah. It was that. Wow. Right in his head. Now wait, before the neighbor got mad at him. Did you ever take shots? Did people ever shoot at you before you were dirty? So I was never. Shot at that I know of. Did you ever have to pull and your piece out? Never. Sh- oh, pull my piece out fifteen times a day. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And and ready to use it fifteen times a day. Did you ever squeeze? Squoze once. Didn't finish the squeeze once, twice, tw- maybe twice. I'm, I get confused sometimes. It was a cop. I almost killed a cop. <laughs> I was squeezing on a cop. Undercover, deep. Never saw him. Never knew who he was. Wow. He's got a black guy on the ground with a gun to his head, and he says he's a cop. I said I don't give a. F- who you are right now. You better drop that gun. He drops the gun. The guy gets up and beats it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Oh, well. Yeah. Holy <laughs> I was squeezing the trigger. And the funniest story in the world. The, this, yeah, I shouldn't say these stories because they, they end up people. You well, know, I'm you, doing movies. I'm, I'm, <laughs> they're going to rob these stories. Bro. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. You're going to get killed you know, after these podcasts. Right? You got, no, you, no, no, no. They can't. This is proprietary. They, 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 who's proprietary? Even my story? Yeah, absolutely. You sure? <laughs> 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 they better not rob me. <laughs> there's, a, there's a hooker in the window telling my partner about something. And, and, and <laughs> there's a little spot we had there. Anyway, and so she's telling my partner... We're doing uh, we're doing an accident report. We're on we're on New Lots Avenue, where where it crosses with Dumont, looking at the projects on Fountain Avenue. So anybody out there who knows know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's the cross of Dumont and New Lots, and the project straight ahead. And the girl comes over, and uh, we're doing an rep- accident report. I don't know who's doing. He's probably doing it. I don't do the paperwork. And uh, she says to him, "I see you looking," because he's going to me. Don't look up. Like this is how my partner was. Don't look up. I go, of course I'm going to look up. What do you mean don't look up? He goes, there's a guy with a gun to someone's head over there. I go, and? He goes, well, don't look up. I don't want to have to go over there. <laughs> like, hey, like I, I, mean, I can't I mean, be bothered. Come on. Come on. I, mean, I, I mean, and yeah. then... And then this girl comes running over, cute little black chick around 16, 17, 18. I don't know. What's the chick? So it's 18. And... Uh, she, she looks in the back then. You didn't matter. Yeah, wishful, wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, fine. Mike. I'd we'll say allow 18-ish. it. She was eighteen. Eighteen. Sure, sure. Anyway, so she looks in the window and she goes, "I see you. You turned your head." She's yelling at my partner. Now I'm like, dude, you can't. We can't just turn off heads here. Yeah. You know, this guy gets capped. <laughs> We're yeah. discussing it now. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the one that gets in trouble because we let someone get murdered instead of like just beeping a horn. We just do something. <laughs> so he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we take off, hit the siren. He's only, this is 80 feet from us. So we're going, oh, fuck. So I hit the siren because they, they're like in, they're so tuned in to each other. They have no clue the police are there. I hit the gas and the siren. I go, I hit the brake. I take the gun out before I stop because I'm, I'm, I'm coming out drawn, right? Ready to go. I hit the brake. I jump out. I open the door. I forget to put the car in park. 
car takes <laughs> off my cover and I've got one leg in the car because I'm trying to come out over the door. I got one leg in the car, one leg in the street. The car's going. I'm trying. I jump in. I hit the. I put it, throw it in park. The car starts lurching like this in the street. <laughs> and I drop the gun, mother. <laughs> did he drop it or did he shoot he the didn't guy? At first, he goes, well, "No, nah, I'm the police," because he didn't want to come out. He wouldn't, didn't want to acknowledge he was the police. And then finally, he he goes. He has. He's wearing his thin. Back in the day, it was a leather jacket. Those those they look like they would be considered a dress leather jacket, but it was so dirty and worn yeah. and skis from his undercover operations right, right. To, to look that way that he looked like ghetto rent low. I mean, just low end. You know, he all the guys in the ghetto look sweet next to this guy. Right. You're up so <laughs> was there communication between undercovers like that and beat cops like you no it doesn't seem like there was any there wasn't any it's so dangerous no, there was none did uh was that a dea or just a new york undercover he was he was you know what i he was a new york city cop but they get assigned to the dea right they do both yeah you know yeah they're, they're new york city cops with a D, dea uh, uh, oversight affiliation right yeah. right Plus, now did, that would be a joint task force case right right did you ever uh, want to work undercover? Did you ever want to be a detective? Yeah, I wanted to work undercover. But you never ended I'd be up rich. <laughs> Did you ever? You, uh, right. <laughs> be so here. tell us, tell us no, that. Tell I us didn't about know that. It. They wouldn't let me. Well, but tell us about why would you be rich as an undercover? Because well, I know everything. The, the undercover, they're in everything. They got every, They know. There's a lot of undercover guys that did well. Let me just tell right, you. Right, right. Okay, so tell, tell, right tell us about that. How much were cops taken? How many? What percentage of of detectives? In East New York, we're on the take with drug dealers. You're trying to then. get me in trouble. I'm trying to become friends with the cops again. <laughs> <laughs> I would say 40 to 50% would take. Yeah. And yeah. we're talking big money. Big money. We're talking 10, 15 Gs a week? No, it wasn't a contract. It was scores. Okay. So explain that. They roll up on a... Uh, so... so Okay, Jesus, you're going to get me in trouble here. Oh, you're Serpico. Long, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, woe is me. <laughs> Long-term long investigations lead to deep money. Yeah. So if you get in undercover operation with a street guy, you don't want the street guy. You want three guys up. Yeah. So and they work that far in. So you go from the street vendor to his supplier to his supplier. Now this guy may make a million a week, but this guy's moving four million a day mm. when he moves his right. stuff up top. He's only making five hundred thousand on a four million dollar move. But his bank but is bang. millions. It's banging. Yeah. It's banging. Yeah. Constant bulk. Yeah. So these guys. They ha they now know where the top guy is. With within two three weeks, they know where the top guy is. It, yeah. it doesn't take that long, right? Because they just follow the train backwards. Right. You tell me your guy. I grab your guy off duty if you want. Yeah. Listen, I'll let you operate. Who's your guy? I mean, I'm not saying I did these things, but and, these are the things I and, and, wanted to do. And so they and so and then <laughs> because I was basically I had given up. Right. I had given up being the good cop that I really should have been and, and, and even wanted to be at one point. I just Hang gave on. up. Let's return to that in a second. So so they move up in three weeks, they find the guy who's supplying the guy who's supplying the street. Thousand kilos. Yeah. Boom. So they hit four million dollars. Boom. And then they See let you have a good night. Done. Everybody wins. Bye. Everybody wins. Have a good day. Nobody goes to jail. No goes to jail. This guy gets paid. Yeah, exactly. And now there's an understanding. This went on all the time. Wow. All it, the time. It's almost better that way. It's almost <laughs> better. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm so jealous. So, but Michael, yeah. sweetie, why did you give up? Sweetie. Yeah, well, sweetie. I feel bad. You made me hurt when you when you said you 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 were yeah, it yeah. seems like you felt bad that they wouldn't let you be an undercover. I mean, look, they, hey, were, they, so their instincts, they were a little smaller than me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, their <laughs> instincts were correct. Well, you know, but, so so that's so that's unfortunate because why did they not because initially their instincts would have been wrong. If they had given me what I thought I had deserved wow. early on. So you now, wanted to be a good cop. I was a good cop. I was a very good cop. But you wanted to be a clean cop, an honest yes, cop. Yes, I did. Yeah. Wow. Clean, honest, good cop. Not a good cop like in the way I would say good. Did you think you could actually have a positive effect on the community? No. But it didn't, that's, <laughs> no, but no, you know, you no, you don't think. It's short, it's short notice. You're like, oh, this is, doing, this is going nowhere. <laughs> but you would have advanced your career, and you would have made some really impressive arrests. Right, right. And it would have been a nice on your badge. Right. It would have looked really good when you get those different colored stuff up on top. You know? <laughs> right, right. And, and you know what? In, in some ways, you would feel like you're contributing. You know you're sure. not changing anything. You're putting your finger in the dike because right. nobody would tell you any different. Because right. if you're undercover, and I know guys, in fact, you'd be an interesting interview one day, maybe. Jimmy, my buddy, he, he was deep undercover for 17 years. He was an Irish kid from I don't know, the Bronx, wherever the f he was from. And he would go into the ghetto and cop. And, and they'd say, you're the police. He'd say, 
you mother. He'd start fighting with them. You call me the police. <laughs> He'd start fighting with them in the street. They were right, but he, right. he'd he get the dope anyway yeah. because he would fight with them. Yeah. And they'd give him the dope, whatever it was, whatever he was copping. <laughs> yeah. You know? So you, you were up you, today, but. <laughs> right. Right. So you would have liked to be that? You wanted to be that deep. I, I didn't mean, need to be that. I, I but I like to be involved in the case, like yeah. investigations yeah. and stuff. I let the I let the guy that maybe fit the role a little better than me be the uh, what do you call it? the buyer, right? Yeah. You know the infiltrator. Sure. And then I would be like uh, doing the case. Sure. Building up. Okay, we got to watch Tommy today. Juan. Because Carlos, there's there's some intellect. Jose. I mean, because there's some intellect to go into it, you know? Like right, you're, right, you're, you're right. calling the shots. Right. It, you're quarterback it, 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 in the whole it's thing. It's a chess game. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I like chess, I found out. So, uh, based, a couple thousand games. Based a off week. of the, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that in there. Yeah, that in spades. Yes. I'm not um, good at spades. I don't touch them. No, no, no. Black people know spades. They're I could good never at figure out spades. Yeah. I don't even look at them. And they slam that thing on the table, man. Whoa. Must be some good hearts. They. So, Who's running the neighborhood? Who's running East New York? Who's running the dope traffic in 83, 84? 83, 84. I mean, I know like the people on the street. Cocaine is being run by the Colombians and the Puerto Ricans uh, 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 a street level. Okay, gotcha. What about the blacks? Um, the blacks, they weren't big in the cocaine business early on until it turned to crack. Why not? Uh, it was a lot of money to get a kilo of cocaine back then, right? You know, sure, so sure. it was a high end. It was a high end um, interest of uh, individuals uh, that would purchase cocaine, right? Uh, so it was the, difficult to get was, in on. It, yeah, yeah. You, you know, when you had to spend at that time thirty five to forty five thousand a kilo for cocaine. Yeah. So it, it was. And, and the, and the point I think that there were races and, and, too. The Colombians wouldn't deal with yeah, blacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, there was there was a lot of different a lot, a lot things of that, that yeah. I wasn't privy to, right, but I would right. suggest that there may have been a lot of that. They didn't trust each other, so the Colombians did it, and they dealt with the Puerto Ricans, mm -hmm. and I guess if down Miami was the Colombia, the mm -hmm. Cubans that they dealt with, mm -hmm. yeah. and they would distribute this stuff. So the now it would be up to them to trust a local black right. guy with, with right. a package or something like so, that. So the Ricans were moving it for the Colombians. Yes. Dominicans have not moved into not East New yet. York yet. Not Got yet. it. Not They'll yet. be there, It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> so uh, at what, do you remember the moment that you found out how much money these cops were taking? Do you remember the moment you found out how dirty the precinct really was? Oh, like how it worked? So there's no moment where I found out what these cops were taking. But what I knew was that something was going on. Mm. Uh, I was being harassed by other cops to stop making car stops in their sector. Wow. I'm like, I mean, when I say harassed, I was pulled over at gunpoint. By detectives or no, plain, beat cops? Plain, plain beat plain. cops with blue and white stripes on their cars and uniforms. And I was in the middle of a car stop one time, and a guy said they pulled up alongside of us. And I'm telling you, he did a car stop on us. And I'm like, <laughs> he pulled over the police. I'm like, well, I thought they were there to help us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> What's up? His name, the guy's name was Terry. The other guy, I forget his name, but but I could pick it out of the lineup. I could pick his picture. Up. Nice kid. This is a nice kid. This guy, he wasn't very nice. Terry, Terry McCor uh, McGregor. This is there. Terry. Hey Terry, hey, give you a plug out there, Terry. He knows. He knows I. F with him. Uh, uh, he pulls me over. He's got his gun. He's got his hand on his gun. I go, what's up? <laughs> Can I do something for you? He's like, what are you doing here? I'm looking around. I got a blue car. I got a uniform on. I got the seven five precinct on the car, and I'm like, "Well, I work here." <laughs> he goes, "Not here, you know." Wow. I go, I go uh, 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 "Really? Something to that effect, you know?" Like, don't quote me if I say the wrong exact word, because you know, people out there, they'll, "Oh, on this interview, you said that." Anyway, so he says to me, uh, "What are you doing pulling cars over in my sector?" I said, "Well, he, he blew a stop sign right in front of us." <laughs> I know I probably shouldn't be doing this, <laughs> but, 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 you know, let me give it a shot. You know, right in front of us, you, you know, when they do it in front of you, if you don't do anything, it's you. It, totally. So, you know, yeah. you, you want to sort of maintain a decorum as a police officer. You know, if you're going to sell drugs, turn away. Yeah, have some kind of respect. Yes, otherwise you're making me look like I'm <laughs> involved and not getting paid for it. So, <laughs> if, you know, if you blow a stop sign in front of me, expect to be stopped. All right. <laughs> I'm not necessarily going to give you a ticket, but expect to be stopped. Anyway, so this guy happened to be getting a ticket from my partner, Sal Chrissy. Hey, Sal, how you doing? And uh, 
Terry McGregor and his partner were pulling us over. They want to mm. know what we're doing here. Stay out of our sector. Don't pull any cars over in our sector. Don't stop at any of our places to eat. And don't come in our sector unless calls to come into our sector. He wow. said, and there'll be unlikely chances that that'll happen. Wow. So I'm like, what the, f I mean, is it really that precious? Right, right. <laughs> is it really that precious here? Right. So it made me think something else was going on. So you started to scratch your head. Yeah, like, like what's going on? Yeah. Is, it, is it really about turf? Right. So and, and what's in this turf? Sure. So what? tell us, what was really going on there? Well, he was protecting whatever he had yeah. going on. Right. He didn't want me tripping across it right. or screwing up anything for him. Right. So, so with that, that leads me to believe that there were weekly quotas. I, I mean, because I've spoken to other people yeah. in, you know, East New York cops, yeah. uh, not from the early 80s, but from right. the 90s, yeah. who actually did have crack dealers every week who would who would pay them a salary, right. you know, 20 Gs or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not, the not? Exactly. Yeah. I think you might have already been I disgraced by that. <laughs> <laughs> I set up I set up the template. Right, the right. The template was set. Wow. So yeah. so it, it seems like you almost just like the movie Serpico, I bring that up, but I'm not kidding. It seems like good cops are like they're given no choice but to join the game, right. but to join the party. Right. So it that's a fallacy, but it's almost not. So what what do I mean by that? It's like there's peer pressure in every neighborhood you walk into. Yeah. And the peer pressure is to either accept it or let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like accept it and be involved or just don't see it. And a lot of guys chose not to see it. Right. But there was a significant number that saw it and partook. Right. So, but you're trying to do your job. It gets to a point where you can barely do your job if, uh, if everybody – is essentially yeah. So it's not as it's not as disruptive as you think. What it is is it's usually done on a nod and a, a, yeah. you know a, mm. a bump and a nod, whatever you want, a bump and a nod, whatever yeah. you want to call yeah. it. It's 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 more like if you have the chance to give the leeway to somebody that's that you that you're good with, then you will take that chance. But you won't do it at your own expense or some other cop's expense. Right. So if you can, so for example, one time uh, my, one of my guys got, well, let's fast forward a little bit, so we'll slow down. But And, and I was able to thwart something. Yes. So, I think that was in the documentary, right? Yes. That was yes. great. Save yeah. that story. Yeah. Because we're going to move into it. Now, uh, were there any situations with really dirty cops, not just guys who were you know, taking the quota right. or, you know, making things disappear at a bust. Right. Were there any really dirty cops who actually killed other cops or who were really, like, blatant and over the line with their corruption that you remember? Well, I, I mean, I could tell stories of other guys, but not— you, Right, yeah, no, no, other know, guys. They, they yeah. were mob cops. They, you know, they called them the mafia cops. They, they were doing hits for a gas, gas pipe. Uh, um, uh, Gasso was his last name. He was a, he was a uh, boss, uh, one of the bosses in the— Vicarina, Gambino, Luke, Colombo, Lucchese? Lucchese's. Lucchese's. Mm, gas, wow. ga, gas pipe. His name is Gas Pipe. I, I don't know what family you're in, Gas Pipe. <laughs> He's still in prison. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he actually Hopefully he stays a, there. He cut a deal with the government, and then he slipped and slid, slid yeah. and, they, and, they, and they threw him back in, under the bus, and they, they gave him life. But he was a mafia cop. No, no. He oh, the hired guy. cops. Gotcha, gotcha. He hired cops, and the, the cops did hits for him. Wow. They pulled guys over on the parkway, pulled them into the rest area, and killed them in the rest area. Holy. One guy's name, and I don't want to say the wrong name, but it would have been Lino. Uh, and those were guys from- um, What precinct? Uh, they, they lived in the sixth. They weren't cops. They was, the, the cops were organized crime cops. Like, but, that was their assignment. Oh, wow. Yeah. They wow. were assigned to organized crime. God. So if they would get all the inside information, and yeah. they'd call these guys up and say, listen, you know, they're coming to get you tomorrow. Right. You know, uh, maybe you want to take off or get rid of all your cash. You know, yeah. you don't want to get- Right. You, know, you know, if you have a million in cash under your bed, move it so yeah. they don't get it when they yeah. show up and take all your Rolexes because they're going too, yeah. you know, and make sure your gumada doesn't tell your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, how New York City has changed. Mm -hmm. That is unreal. And this isn't that long. This is 40 no, years ago. No, this is the 1980s. Not even 40, really. Yeah. So bring us up to the point where you decide to change teams, so to speak. <clears throat> so we sort of touched on it a little bit, but. I end up. I, I, I we talk about. I've talked about it too, too often to not say it. it. It sort of ends up. The focal point is when I pull over the Puerto Rican mystery, and you might have heard that. Okay, retell though. It's yeah. been a few years. So I pull the car over, and it was no license, no registration, no insurance, no plates, nothing. 
Nothing. <laughs> and it was a young Puerto Rican kid. And so I pulled him over, license with nothing. He's got nothing. But he's got a stack of hundreds. Yeah. Right. There you go. He's got a Corvette. He doesn't speak English. He's only come here a couple months from Puerto Rico, and that's when Puerto Ricans would come here like right. that back then. Totally. They would come, just arrive, and become, because they're citizens. They don't need anything. Right. They don't need ID. No. Because they're citizens. Mm. So the guy goes out and buys a car, has no papers, because he don't give a It's all good. Mm. I own a car, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. so he's driving around a car, and I'm like, look, I got to take this kid's car. He's really not a bad kid. What do he do? He got no plates on the car. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to confiscate his car, give him 2,000 in tickets, and all this Call it tow truck, whatever. And impound. I probably would have drove it, impound it, and drove it around for an hour or something. <laughs> I said, you know what? You know, maybe there's a way we can work this out. Why don't you? I, I like. I must have spoken enough English because I said I want a lobster lunch, and he knew what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> I said, not ham and cheese, lobster. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so he left. Off. I tell the story. I don't remember because when I think back, I don't know if it was a hundred, a hundred and fifty, or three hundred. I don't know what the f he left. But it was significant enough at the time for me to go, yeah, <laughs> this is going to get me at least a lobster lunch or something out of it. Like 300 bucks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instead of instead of the 2,000 in tickets. Yeah, and all the bullshit all and the impound bullshit. in the car. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I left a couple hundred bucks yeah. under my briefcase on the back seat. He left. And then we pulled away. I was sort of nervous as hell. I don't know if I was setting myself up for a problem or whatever. And then about 15, 20 minutes later, I'm looking around. I got the water. Yeah, no, one, no one burnt. It didn't burn a hole in my hand or my pocket yet. Yeah. So was, and how much were you making a week at that time? Oh, I was making about $230 a week, $240 maybe yeah. a week at mm -hmm. that time. So Risk, I got half my it, money in one shot. Risking your life. Yeah. 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 And he just yeah. casually you know, like and Everybody says that. And I, I have to, be, I have to uh, downplay that statement because- I, you don't really necessarily take the police job for the money. What happens is you eventually realize that you're not getting money. Yeah. That, you know, when you see the money and you see what you, when you run into and you're like, I'm locking up this guy. He's got 17000 in cash in his pocket. He don't have a job. He's a nighttime clerk, this one, at the bowling alley. His mother <laughs> bought him a brand new Jaguar. I'm like, I don't have a mother like this. And I, don't, I, and I live in a home in, in, in Long Island in the suburbs. What the <laughs> Right. And I'm just, you just can't make this up. Yeah. So it turns you, it begins to plant little seedlings mm. in your brain and eventually they grow. Yeah. And so when you say, when people say, well, you weren't getting paid enough. No, I wasn't. No, I didn't say I, you weren't getting paid enough. No, I just no, said uh, that you were getting paid. Yeah. You know? Which isn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Yeah. If you could eat shit, we never go, we never go hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't you have paid. You didn't have lobster money. Yes, yeah, you didn't yeah, have exactly. lobster money. So this kid, as casually as like finding some change in the couch, yeah. just passed you three hundred bucks. Right. So you felt scared, but but thrilled. It, it, yeah, excited. Right? If I can get away with this, this is not a bad little gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did it progress from there? Well, then it became opportunistic rather than organized. Yeah, right. So, well, you know, I mean, if I go to a, so we go, back then there were drug, drug houses, drug dens, drug houses, where people would come, they'd meet, they'd buy their shit, they'd get high, and then there'd be a guy over there selling it. Well, you know, yeah. people are coming and going, they'd be on the couch. So you'd hit a house and you'd find three, four grand under the couch, yeah. a bag of drugs, whatever. Mm. And you could either score it and keep it or voucher it. No one's going to miss it, you know? Uh, who's going to claim it? The yeah. drug dealers, you know? Uh, so it became property. Now, now, if you... if you, mine. If yeah. you scored uh, a brick... Bricks you, didn't come by very often, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. All right, yeah. four ounces. Yeah, a very, quarter, yeah. Quarter, Nine correct. ounces, a quarter key. Yeah, correct, that's who, type. Who would you go sell that to? Well, at some point, it didn't, it didn't start out that way, but at some point, I would bring it uh, home to people I knew that were involved in drugs in, the, in my neighborhood, or... Out in Long Island? Yeah. Who, yeah. who are they? Irish guys. Regular. Regular guys? White beings. guys? Human beings. White guy. Everybody was getting money back then. Yes. So white suburban drug dealers. Yes. Gotcha. Correct. Gotcha. So you didn't get, get it off to other people in the ghetto? Not initially, because I didn't know who to go to. Right. And then, <laughs> eventually, I found out who to go to, which well, yeah. would be Baron. Right. True Baron. Not Baron. Baron actually never really sold a drug in his life, but he connected people. Right. So. Who was Baron? Baron owned the Auto Sound City in um, 
in Brooklyn on Atlantic Avenue and Crescent Street. That's right. Which and, becomes a major focal point right. part in the documentary. It's mentioned and whatnot as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So Baron had this, for people who haven't seen the documentary, which you must go see, one of the best Netflix documentaries. Is there one better? Just tell me. Uh, let's see. Maybe Tiger King. Okay. If you're a white trash, okay. nothing. You okay. know, you so, like that kind so, of stuff. So none. So go ahead. So none. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I always say, it's one of the best. They always say, I'm like, oh, would you tell me which one was better? Just, I just want to know. <laughs> Just for the just for the record, I want to see what's <laughs> that we didn't beat. <laughs> so so Baron owns this auto body shop, and obviously this is East New York in the 1980s. His customers coming in, uh, he would put in sound systems, yeah. things boom like box, that, yeah, they, boom boxes, yeah. all that. But did he also put in traps, or did he not? In for, in the cars, in, like like apartments and stuff. Yeah, compartments. Yes. Yeah, yes. so he put in traps. Yeah. His customers are drug dealers, right. like exclusively. It's exclusive. So he knows everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah, and or not, and out of the neighborhood, and out of the neighborhood. Yeah. They're coming here they're to coming get their their, their get cars their customized. Done. Correct. Uh, how does that figure into your story? So, because I became friendly with Baron and trusted, uh, how I did you do that? How'd you come to know him? Uh, you know, you, you, it starts out as a low, and then it starts out as, hey, can you do something for me? Can I do something for you? And then all of a sudden, we realize there's a trust going on here, and hey, all your, all your customers are drug dealers, and, you know, uh, is there any way we can do something? And then all of a sudden, he calls me up and says, uh, we got a guy that wants to be uh, protected. Simple as that. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't afraid to approach me because we had gotten that trust level between us. Mm. And, uh, you know, guys can quickly form a bond of trust and, and where, they can, where they can broach subjects mm -hmm. that you might not necessarily broach with a law enforcement officer if you're not friends with them. Mm. But, you know, you could sample the waters, but, you know, slowly and gently, you dip your toe in a little bit. Mm. I can't tell you how he groomed me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it didn't help that he had a brand new Corvette and he had a lovely wife standing in front of it when I when I met the two right, of them. Right, right. You know, it was disarming to say the least. Sure. You know? What year did you meet Baron? I met Baron in eighty. I could say four or five. I don't okay. know exactly. But by eighty five, crack is taken over. Oh, like it's. Do you remember how fast the crack epidemic swept uh, so New York? I neighborhoods? found my first crack. I want to say I could be off. It was my first, but when when the guy standing on the corner on Crescent and Fulton and we got a call for a drug sale. We showed up and there was a guy standing there talking to me like this. <laughs> and I, I go, what's, what's going on? He goes, nothing. I go, someone said you're selling drugs. He goes, what's the matter? He goes, dentist. I said, oh, dentist. Uh, of course. Complete. <laughs> Makes sense. <Yeah>. Dentist. <laughs> And I'm about to leave, and I go, something's not right. I grab him by the throat. <laughs> <laughs> I go, open your mouth, mother. <laughs> and all these, he had vials ribbing his jaw here, and he, he probably had 15, 20 vials in his oh. mouth, right? And I go, spit them out. And he spits them into the, uh, I don't know what it is, by the way. I have no idea yeah. what this is. He spits them into the sewer. All right, we condition corrected. Yeah. <laughs> street, street justice, it's over. Go totally. Yeah. You go, I go. And did you look at it like, what the f is this nah, like off white nah, thing? I don't want to touch it, spit it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't even know what it actually was. Right. I didn't even really get a good look. I knew it was something plastic right. in his mouth, right. looking whatever, glassine looking. I don't know what the f it was in his mouth. I was gonna get in there. Well, like nobody knew what it was at first. So, so he spits it out, and then I get a call back about fifteen minutes later. Uh, at the time, we were five, five George. Respond to uh, back to Crescent and Fulton. The, uh, the sewer plate has been removed. The guy's inside the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, wait a minute. This must be worth something. <laughs> this, this must be worth yeah. something. If he took a 400-pound sewer plate off to get like 10, bed, 10 9, bed, I don't know what it was worth yeah. back then. Uh, and then so from that moment forward, we knew to, there, must be, there must be money in that, in that, in right. that game. So, and then shortly thereafter, we, the, the tricks and the trade were really brilliant son of a bitches. Really? Brilliant. Really? Brilliant. Really? Brilliant people. Can you remember Tennis like- ball. What was that? Oh, putting it tennis in. Tennis ball. You know, right. Tennis balls bounce. Yeah. With holes in them. Yeah. <laughs> the milk cartons, you know. 
Hey, yep. that guy's been drinking the same cotton for like three days. Mm. <laughs> it actually looks like it's three days old. Right. <laughs> you know, just the way they would do it, or they'd leave it over here, they'd put it over there under a rock. Mm. It just it was just. Well, were you weren't involved in like street rips of crack dealers, were you? I, it was just so blatant. Yeah. I mean, uh, how could you? We not would get we would get phone we get we get nine eleven phone calls. Male Hispanic, male black, on the corner of Riverdale and Hinsdale, wearing PF flyers and, and, and a beige khaki outfit, you know? And then you'd roll up, and the guy'd be standing there, hi, how you doing? <laughs> Turn around, we toss him, you know, either you come up with some crack or they threw it over there. So when you pulled up, he ain't got it, but it's over there. Now what do you do? You know, is this yours? No, no, yeah. it was mine. That's, you know, so yeah. I mean, it was just. How did crack dealing change the street, the neighborhood? Violent. It got more violent. Violent. So there's 100 murders when you go in no, in 82, no, 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 83. No, no, there was only 60 murders when I got there. Okay. So by 85, 86? There's 85 to 100 murders a year. Wow. And And the shootings double, triple. Yeah. It cut, breaks down to like one death, ten shootings. That's about how right. it, so a lot of people survived. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, they don't know how to shoot. They're yeah. shooting sideways. Yeah, still. that's just thing, you know? <laughs> White boys, much higher fatality yeah, rate. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. You know? Because they train. <laughs> they, shoot, yeah, yeah. they shoot better on the basketball court. They train, court. yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> we shoot better with this. <laughs> Watch out when those rednecks come. <laughs> so, and, and there's corner crews everywhere now, right? Running it. Every corner every has, corner. has every a different corner. crew. No, selling no, tops. Well, every 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 corner is controlled by a, uh, one organization, so they have like a certain section that's theirs, mm. and they would fight for them. That's where the, the that's where the bodies would come from. And are the blacks are controlling the corners now? Pretty much, yes. Any Puerto Pretty Ricans? Much. Yes, or? yes, yes. Certain neighborhoods you can't be black and sell, right? You know, and this neighborhoods are divided up racially. Yeah. You know, you you wouldn't be selling in front of the pink houses if you were Puerto, Puerto Rican. Let me mm. tell you right now, right. Or, or or the Marcy projects. You had to be black. Right. And, uh, I right. mean, if you were Puerto Rican, it's because you were working with them. Right. Yeah. Right. So now, and it is this time that you meet and get friendly with Baron. Correct. And Baron comes to you and says, "I there's a man who wants to yeah, cello. work with us in yeah. cello." The most, one of the most charismatic people yeah. in that documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us who he was. No, not cello. That's Adam. You're talking about. That's Adam. Cello's the guy that ends up dead by his own people. Okay. Cello, Cello ends up he only, he runs a spot up on a uh, on Fulton Fulton and Norwood. Who is he? Who is Cello? He he's in charge of a, a major uh, street level organization. Dominican. Dominican guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in charge of a big Dominican group that are running this section of East New York. So Dominicans, Dominicans. Uh, now immigrating pretty much en masse yes. from the island. Yes, correct. They're starting to make their way into New York City. Correct. The, they're known, of course, for their stronghold is Uptown, Washington correct. Heights, correct. Harlem. Right. But, and that's where all these guys live. Right. But they would come- but They, they, they buy would come, bodegas. They buy and own bodegas yeah. in, in, in Brooklyn, and they set them up as fronts. Now, the bodegas do very well. But they also sell crack. Right. And not necessarily in and out of the bodega, but outside of the bodega. Right. So they own the bodega- they and, hold, that's their, and that's their front. And they hold the work. And, and it all gets controlled from the, from the bodega, inside and out. But you might not necessarily buy inside the bodega if you're buying right. small pieces. Right. You know, the big pieces in the bigger business get sold right out of the bodega, mm. where you go in for your pampers and your milk, and underneath your pampers is your brick. Right. So, I mean, this that's different way of operation. Wow. So those guys lived in the heights, but set, but they would come down Correct. to hustle. Correct. To, or to really hit the streets yeah. off wholesale. Correct. Wow. How many bricks do you think were moving in and out of those bodegas every day? I don't well, know. Well, so Adam would do 50 a day. 50 kilos. He, out had, of, he had 475 customers. So Drug dealers. Yeah. He's yeah. hitting off drug those, dealers. Those are his customers. And they're breaking it down into crack. Whatever they're or, doing. Or, we you don't know, care. It's pieces. Just, just, they're just coming in. You, you, wow. Usually it's a half a kilo and up, but he would have some guys that would take uh, big eights, which yeah. is uh, four and a half, yeah. uh, 4.5. I, mm -hmm. I forget. It's been such a long yeah. time. <laughs> wow. So, so how so does- So 450 customers, if they're coming in for a half a brick, just say, you know, twice a week, it's a lot of kilos. The streets are flooded with- 
I, I, gold I, chains. I, I, no, 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 but think <laughs> about the economy. Gooseneck, gooseneck equal. Oh, think about killing. the economy of killing. that, though. It was killing. There's millions of dollars millions. moving in and out of those ghetto yeah. streets Richest every day. Richest places in America. Richest places in America. Yes. God, if they had saved that money and bought those buildings. If those had been Jewish drug dealers, yeah. we would have oh, never <laughs> had gentrification, man. God damn, yeah. dude. But you can't blame them. They had never had anything. And, yeah. you know, you give people they no were, education. They were living quick. Yeah. Fast and hard. So, so how do things progress before Adam comes in? Tell us about how things progress with Cello. So Cello and I, we were flashing the pan because Cello ends up shorting me the first opportunity he gets. Hold on, hold on. What was the agreement? The to- agreement was that we would monitor and, and, and inform him on his availability for the weekend of 4th of July. So what? the infinite wisdom in my mind was in 4th of July weekend, most cops are on a detail doing the, 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 the ferry boats and the, and the 4th of July fireworks. Yeah. And if you take a detail in narcotics, usually you get the holiday off because that's why you take a detail. Mm. So you might work undercover and holes and whatnot, but you get 4th of July off with your family. Mm. So. So, I mean, that was my All right. score. Yeah, of course. Yeah, OQ could give me 8000 to tell you that you'll have a good weekend, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Even though I wasn't working it. <laughs> right. So you were essentially just uh, oh, getting, on getting paid for in- information. Yeah. Right. right. I'm going to tell you how many cops are going to be in this area at this time. Correct. Or if, not. If that be the case. If, if I were there. Right. Did you ever... Uh, I, would t- I would. This is what I'd say is don't or do. That's all. You can work or don't work. Right. Or... They're in a blue car today. Don't sell when they pull up. Right, <laughs> don't, right. don't hand them anything. Right, you know? right. And how much was the agreement at first to be paid? Eight thousand a week. That's, that is a no brainer. Yeah, that's a no brainer. It's good money. And you're you're not doing. You're just you know saying you're consulting. consulting. This is a consulting fee. Yeah, right. It wasn't like I was saying, oh, go after the police. It wasn't, you know, I'm trying to justify my actions. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No, no, no. Is that okay? <laughs> I'm in a jumpsuit. Come on. It's a crime podcast. It's not a pro law podcast. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, here you go. So, yeah, so no, I get the point is it wasn't, I not to justify my actions and say, you know, I didn't really do anything because I really didn't, but that doesn't matter. Right. The perception that I was doing something was enough for him to pay and enough for me, almost like the Bidens, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> they exactly. really didn't do anything, right. but they just, the perception was. Yeah. <laughs> we should erase that <laughs> him. Yeah, seriously, we'll end up dead, dude. You don't want to cross them or the <laughs> him. Um, you guys, I got to take a minute to thank our longtime sponsor and friend of the show, Mood CBD. Mood is the number one Delta 8 and Delta 9 products company in the country, and they deliver everywhere. Even if you live in a state where you don't have full legalization yet, Mood CBD can deliver discreetly and legally to your doorstep, okay? They have a, an amazing array of gummies, edibles, pre-rolls, um, flour, anything you need in the Delta 8 and Delta 9 world they have. I use their products every day. I use it for my injury. I use it to help me sleep. Uh, they're just the best. Go to their website right now, you guys, and use those promo codes. If you're a fan of the show, you know. Connect 20 to get 20% off anything on their website. Okay. And then of course, if you want a free five count pack of gummies, use promo code connect free, and they'll just send you a free pack of gummies. All you do is pay for shipping. Go over to hellomood.co right now and get you some. What's up everyone. I'm coming on the road to do stand up. October 12th. I'll be in Toledo. October 15th. I'll be at hilarities in Cleveland. November 1st. I will be at the stress factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. November 2nd. I will be in New Brunswick, New Jersey on the 5th of November. I'm going to be at the New York Comedy Club doing the New York Comedy Festival right here in New York City. November 15th, I'm in Dallas at Hyenas. November 16th, I'm in Austin at the Vulcan. Do not miss that one. On December 14th, I'm in San Diego. And on December 21st, Zanies in Chicago. This is a big one. I got a lot of fans in Chi-Town. Come out to that. Let's pack it out. Get your tickets at johnnymitchell.biz. All right, let's get into the episode. So... And did you ever, when you were consulting like this, plausible deniability? Did right. they? Did they ever? Was anybody ever trying to set up a hit and need you? You know, you know, a guy's going to be in this location, so you want to get a shot off. So I come to you, the cop, and say, "Hey, is there? Is there going to be any uh, patrols wait, 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 around are here?" Are you asking me if there was going to be a hit? No, I'm saying like, did when you were consulting with these dope dealers uh, at any point 
like letting them know where the cops were being, where they weren't, did they ever use you for information because they were trying to set up a hit on somebody? Maybe. Yeah. Well, what, you know and you won't tell us? Can we do it on the Patreon? Maybe. Can you save it for the Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash the connect show yeah. where we get uh where we get the full story. The, full, the real deal. We gotta get him drunk. What we gotta do yeah, is no, get you I a don't couple drink more anymore. drinks. You know that. Um, I don't yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's tell that to uh, me an hour ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't drink. No, my father's I, we have a deal. I won't drink anymore. Is your father still living? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Amazing. Um, okay, so uh, how long and so what happened with Cello? So, so he you, showed me seven hundred dollars, and uh, and I told him, and I put pressure on his store, closed down his business. I was making se- over short. was seven hundred dollars. Yeah, but he was paying you eight thousand. What's so, the big deal? So, so, what do you mean? What's the big deal? Right. <laughs> See, that's why I, you survived, and I wouldn't because <laughs> I, I would have said that's ah, seven hundred bucks. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> then you'll never get paid. Right. Because you can't give an inch in that life. Yeah, it's the way it is. Wow. I, I had a guy turn his podcast off because he wouldn't give me. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, no, I'm paying you, motherfucker. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I ain't showing you. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, so, so, just, so how'd you so close? It's principle. An agreement is principle to me. That's it. it. If it was for $3 and we agreed on it, and I realized I should have asked for $3,000, i take the $3 and I know next time I ask for $3,000. Right. That's it, but that's it. That's just that's the way that's the way it is. I mm-hmm. mean, you can't do that to people right. because you make an agreement. That's it. So how did you close his spot down? I put a cop there. Yeah, I paid the cop to sit there. Right, thousand right. dollars for four nights. And what does that do? <laughs> so he was, what he do? He was right, sitting, sitting in the lodge. Right. So what are the so then the fiends stopped coming they to that stopped spot. Going to his right. spot, and so they don't make any money. They put a hit on me. <laughs> Some ballsy sons of bitches. Yeah. Like I said, New York ain't the hey, same. He put a put hit, a hit on out me. on a cop. What was the contract for? They didn't tell me, but I, I would say fifty grand. You know, to ki- shoot me. Ooh. I don't know if they wanted to kill me, but shoot me. Yeah, somebody would take that in East New York. Oh yeah, back fuck, in nineteen eighty five. Oh yeah, yeah. How did you find out about Baron. the hit from Baron? Yeah. So, so then what? How, how did that? How did that conclude? So, how did that well, beef I got conclude? Nine eleven on my pager. Back then we had beepers. Yeah. You ever see a beeper? No, no, he's a boy. He hasn't seen a VP. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from Baron, and I, he says, "Come here, I got to talk to you." So I went to his office. What's up? They put it on you. I said, "Okay." And the funny story is, the precinct knew. What? And they never told me. The seven five knew. And they never told me. They wanted you they gone. They never <laughs> told me. They wanted you <laughs> gone. They never. Told me, and how do you know? Because Joe Hall, you know the detective in the film, he was he was in with the Dominicans. He was deep in them, and he knew all. He had people telling him information that there's a hit on Mike the cop. He didn't. He didn't. He never told me, and I never. I never was told by anybody. Why? Why did they want you gone? Oh, because uh, what? They don't give a. F- <laughs> I can't ask. I can't answer for that. Were more. you just not well liked? I was loved. So then, why the? F- would they not tell because you that I you was had a hit embarrassing out. those that knew what I was doing? Oh, like the clean cops yeah. didn't like. But you're like you're you're only got your toes in now. You're not. Yeah, re- I mean, yeah, but to them it's still a disparagement, and they and they rather see you dead. See, that's the one. That's the one thing about cops. That's that's. Uh, but which is which is I guess honorable, but not. You can up as a cop, and your whole life you're destroyed in their eyes. Right. You can't come back and be redeemed. Hmm. Like like. I think I've been sort of working my way through redemption in my life. And right. This slip ups, we all, yeah. we live, a, by the grace of God, we live a long life and yeah. we're going to make mistakes along the way. But when a cop falls from grace, mm. Mm. does he get a chance? Right. Or is he no good, dirty cop till he's 93? Right. I mean, by the grace of God, I'll, be, I'll live to 90, 93. Mm. Mm. Dear Lord. Well, a good, you know, right, a good well, 93. Don't keep me alive if I'm not doing good. Well, you know, cops. Let's be honest. Most of them, and not you, they're they're not the the most nuanced intellectual people. And they're Irish guys. They think in binary, yeah. good and bad, right. evil and going yeah, to heaven. You know what? You have a point, Dan. So, a, yeah. no offense if you're a cop, yeah. be a smarter one. Yeah. It's it's yeah. you know, and that's kind of what dr- the country is now like. That you're yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, a woke liberal leftist commie, or well, you're, you know, yeah. a hardcore Trumper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing. There's no room for like I don't yeah. know. Some see, middle I'm, ground. see that, that's sad because I'm that guy. 
I like to bridge that gap. Yeah. I'm a, you know who I am. You yeah. know, I'm a hardcore Trumper. I'm not going to lie to my people no, out here. But I respect, I respect your opinion. Yeah. You just don't force it on me. Right. That's all. Right. That's it. Right. Go forward. Mm-hmm. Go to go to work. Get laid. Suck a d- if that's what you do. I don't care. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I don't you. care. I don't give a. <laughs> just don't make me do it. Unless, unless it's a Suck nice. A- Big fat. <laughs> if I'm gonna go down, if I'm going down, make sure it's one of uh, uh, memorable. Make it memorable, all right? I went to 14, 12 and a half years of prison. I never, so I'm still working on my first, yeah. all right? So it better be amazing. <laughs> Man, you went 12 and a half years without sucking a. The yeah, black not, guys yeah, did love yeah, you. Yeah, that, they did love you. <laughs> you. You did good on the street, Mikey. They, there was many that were begging, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, I bet. I was pretty at one time. Oh, you were a good-looking yeah, kid. I was, I was you pretty. were a good-looking kid. You had a good hairline. Yeah. So listen, so so Cello's got a hit out on you for 50 large. The right. cops in, in the 7-5 don't give a shit. They, right. they want you gone. Right, so I find Cello the same day. I, I have never met him in my life, but I found him that day. And he was, he was there, and he didn't know. I pulled him over. And and what happened? Uh, and I he's license registration insurance card. He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know it's you. He doesn't Hold know. On. How is he paying you through like a conduit or yeah, through Baron? Through Baron. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So you actually never met him. Never okay, met wow. Him. Yeah, and that was on purpose. Yeah. I didn't need to. Yeah. And uh, license registration. And he never met me. He didn't know who I was. And I happened to be working that day with Lisa. I want. I think I want to say her name, last name was Breland. She was internal affairs. <laughs> <laughs> they set her to work with me uh, because they wanted to keep an eye on me. And uh, I broke her. She said to me, Dowd, I'm, uh, I'm really not here to get you, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, my God. See, I'm here to cool off, she says. I jammed a few people up in the 114. They sent me here to cool off. <laughs> but this was not yet. I didn't know that yet. So I pulled the guy over. I said, I'll be right back. He's a friend of mine. I tell her. <laughs> License registration. He hands me his papers like this. Right? He's a little uncomfortable. Mm. And... Uh, I'm praying because he's always has he always has a Mac Ten in his car. Wow! He opens the glove box. I don't see a Mac Ten. I'm like, I don't see one laying around, and I'm pissed because I could kill him, right? Yeah, I could kill him. Oh could, right, because he got a Mac Ten. He's got you got a Mac pull 10. out, blow his head off. He's got a Mac Ten. The word is he's going to kill me. I'm going to just kill him here. So right. I, no Mac Ten. Were you waiting for him to reach for it? Yeah, praying. Oof. So, <laughs> well, because I was you know, no, I realize, of course, no, I get it. I, I, I would have done the same. Now he's looking to kill me. Right. right, he's put a hit on me. Yeah, I'm gonna end it right here. It's as serious as it gets. Yeah, you know, th- this is exactly it. And, and back in '85, like it seems unfathomable now that you kill a cop in yeah. New York. Yeah, but back in '80, it happened. Yeah, it happened. That's how they yeah. took down the Supreme Team. They yep. murdered a, a rookie cop, yeah. Eddie Burns. Yeah. So yeah. So so here and so I killed a lot of hit. I got all the heat for that one. Anyway, um, but he doesn't reach for it. So he doesn't reach. And he gives me his license for, and I said, I, and I just looked at him. I, I took the paper and I threw it right in his lap. I go, you know who I am? He looks up at me. I go, you put a f- hit on me. He goes, I said, yeah, mother. F- why don't we do it right here? Once you get out of the car, I'll let you get out, and we can do it. We'll turn around. We'll do the Mexican f- standoff. We'll take ten paces. We'll turn around. I'll give you all that. We can do it right here. Under, under the L on Fulton Avenue, Fulton Street. Oh, no, man, no, man. I said, the call of f- hit off. I left, got in the car. About 15 minutes later, my beeper goes off. <laughs> it's Baron. <laughs> I go, what's up? I go, I drove over to the shop, left her in the car. She don't know what's going on. I, uh, he goes, he called it off. I said, all right. And here's your, here's your $300, $700. Here's your $700. <laughs> <laughs> Got that 700. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have went to jail for life for killing him, but I got that 700. <laughs> yeah, goddamn right. And the, and the hit got called off. Mm-hmm. So you got made, you got straightened out. Mm-hmm. And so so Cello ended up being murdered? By his own people, yeah. Shortly after that? Uh, I, I don't know the exact time, but it wasn't far after that because when I went away in 92, I think he had already been murdered. Wow. Yeah. Do you know what that was over? Like he was his own people? He's- his own people yeah. over for money. Yeah. And he, half the time it's over a girl. Right. You know, it sounded like he sounded like kind of a jerk off. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Right? He was full of himself. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, I could find out if you want to make a phone call. I could find Damn. out what they actually killed him over. To be honest with you, you, you make you make being a cop sound like a lot of fun. It was. You know, it was because you get to talk. <laughs> I did try it. Try it. Oh, try it. 
Listen, back in the, in the days when we were running the street, we were a gang. Yeah. You were. We were a gang. No question. But let me tell you something. In, the, in defense of police, if you were not skirting the law, you were treated with dignity and respect. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Peruvian, whatever you were. What do you, what do you mean? You as a cop were treated with no, respect? No, no. Uh, civilian. Civilians. Really? For civilians were treated with, Well, pe with, uh, people in L.A., you know, the LAPD was notorious for with civilians, right? Yeah, but not in the, in the ghetto, in the street. You, 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 why would you? There's so many other people that need you to with them. Mm, you know, you, yeah. you know, it's just, right. I don't care about L.A., okay? Right. I, I'm right. talking about here. Yeah, yeah. You know, guys would leave here and go to L.A. and go, oh, my God. Right. I know that because I know guys that, have, yeah. that I, in fact, I know one out there right now that's a friend of mine that was his cop in, in Brooklyn that's a sergeant out there right oh, now no who's, running, who's running their uh, their gang squad. No yeah, and he said the LAPD Knocko. Knocko is. Nolan. And he said the LAPD's dirtier. No, or no, worse? no, 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 no. It was. It was not the way he liked policing. Huh. It wasn't about dirty. It was more about just he didn't like the policing tactics, mm. the whole approach. I don't know. I didn't get into it with him. And then he came back to New York City mm. to become a cop again. Then he said, "You know what?" <laughs> he was shoveling snow or something one day. He said, "What am I?" crazy i can do the same thing out there and just adjust my lifestyle <laughs> exactly exactly wow okay so uh cello cello's gone uh you're back you need another you know you need another client yeah how does Hell yeah so and, i like this money <laughs> that's right so how long after uh the thing with cello ends did two you meet weeks. adam two weeks through baron yeah okay yeah adam i gotta can i get adam on the podcast You'd have to go to the DR. <laughs> oh, is he? He fled to the DR. No, no. Or he got deported. He got deported. That's right. Yeah. Adam is. You a book a trip. I'll take you to Adam. For house. real? I swear to Christ, yeah. we'll do it. No, he's never been podcasted. Adam is a never G. been live podcasted. Never. Wow. Adam is a G. Yeah. yeah. Adam is. Go, I mean, go watch the seven five. He's got a velour suit on. He's got gazelles with gazelle shades with no lenses in them. I mean, he's got like a red beard. I mean, the guy's wild, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy, you it's just like you can't make this stuff up. You yeah. can't, Hollywood screenwriters can't yeah, write it. No, no. Did you get that they impression of him when you him. first met him? Well, he, I thought he was cute. <laughs> 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 Don't forget, when I met him, he had little Capizios on and a brand new red Porsche. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm like, right. what the f? Are you a Dominican? Well, he's a f Dominican. He's, he's got a full accent. He's a, he's yeah, a real Dominican. Yeah. yeah. He was a you met him. <laughs> And what kind of weight was he moving? Give us a, an idea of the level of, well, of drug see, dealer he was, he was. He was moving two, three hundred kilos a week. Yeah. Two, he had 475 customers. Yeah. yeah. As you said, he was yeah. moving it all through the bodegas. Yeah. 200 he, a week, 300 a week, and, and 40 that, a day, 40 times seven, 280. And was that just in Washington, or excuse me, in East New no, York? No, he had other locations. He had other locations. Yeah, yeah. Other bodegas. He had around. other bodegas, yeah. Who who were his connects? He had five bodegas. What Colombians he had to be working with? He Colombians. was working with them. He was getting them directly, not from uh, uh, Pablo, but the the guy from Pablo, the Medellin cartel. Yeah, he was got a thousand or fifteen hundred at a time. Right, it's right. a lot of kilos. Fresh off the boat. Yeah, fresh off the boat. Yeah, I, I don't know if they weren't coming from JFK at the time, but but I, you know that's what I think. Could you get that kind of work through the airport? Well, if you get 50 at a clip, you know, you get three people. Right. You know, Avianca Airlines was bringing it in. Yeah. Eastern Airlines at one time right. for the CIA. You know, you can go yeah, down the list. Course. TWA was bringing it in. Right. Pan American was bringing it of in. Of course. That was a CIA front, yeah. Pan American. Some, some of them were. I don't yeah. know the exact. But right. the bottom line is that uh, all the, uh, all the uh, airlines, don't forget, the confluence of LaGuardia, Kennedy, and Newark. That triangle, right? and they all came in from Colombia and South America. <laughs> right. Okay, and they and then and they were doing four or five flights a day, yeah. even if it was empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's the truth. That's right. It's the right. truth. So I don't know what was going on, right. but that's a lot of stuff. So so Adam's getting a thousand, fifteen hundred joints at a time. I'll tell you a story. I was working in Brooklyn, and uh, and I just had left East New York, and I I went to the rehab. I got out of rehab, and I was in the nine four, and. Where's the nine four? Uh, what neighborhood is that? Greenpoint. Okay. Where you got? Where you? Where you? Uh, South twelfth and uh, north north twelfth and out of that area over by the uh, McCarran Park. Okay, so Greenpoint, Brooklyn, essentially. Yeah, Greenpoint, yeah. Brooklyn, Bushwick over there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, something breaks out. A story breaks out, and it comes in the news. And there's there's a toilet paper. I could be wrong, but I think it's a toilet paper making machine. 
I don't know what one looks like, but I saw a picture of one. <laughs> and it's a giant barrel, like 10 feet high and round, and by 10 feet deep, let's say. And that was shipped from Colombia. <laughs> they, I guess they make the best toilet paper down there. Notorious toilet paper They make the best there. toilet paper <laughs> barrel makers, I guess, in the world. And inside that barrel of toilet paper maker was loaded with kilos. Yeah. You know, like 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 Tons. two thousand, three thousand yeah. kilos. Yeah. So they so, found so many different ways. To, they were so to just bring it in. With it, it. It's just insane. And so and and in the eighties, it was getting bombed daily. daily. Didn't matter how it got it, through, it, any it, and always, any and always. It was and, relentless, and it, and relentless. It would, and it would go. And it was the best sh in the world, untouched. Pink, <laughs> pink, right? Pink Peruvian <laughs> flake. And so they. Sure. So as we all know. The, the Colombian kingpins, if he, it was either Medellin or Cali, they would get it to the Dominicans, who were the ones that supplied they were doing the, the streets. Street. Yeah, correct. And Adam is one of these guys, and he's thorough. Did yeah. you did you strike? He strike. He was a thorough he, guy. He, very very f efficient. Mm -hmm. He had a, he had an operation, and he yeah. he ran his business like a business. Yeah, you know, it wasn't slipshod. Yeah, it was all tucked in. I mean, they would pay. Two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars for the corner. What? What do you mean? So he would buy a bodega here, and then there's a guy on the corner selling, yeah. and he'd tell the guy it's my, it's going to be my corner. And the guy's like, no, it's my corner. Yeah. Well, here's two hundred thousand. Go go two blocks away. You <laughs> Beat <can't>. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two hundred thousand. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll take it. You know? Yeah. Just, Think yeah. about that. Not one gunshot. No. No. No need. Say, just, hey, just here. Here. This yeah. is my corner now. Here, yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, okay. Or you're gonna go. Right, right. And he had. We'll so figure it out. He, One of us is gonna run this <laughs> corner. I'm offering you a nice price to leave. And did he have hitters like that on his on his squad? You'll have to ask him. <laughs> but did he have soldiers? Did he did he oh, have he, guys? He had yeah backup. Deep. Okay, tell us about all this story. I'm getting chills when his bodega gets robbed. I don't know if you had anything to do with that. But that's not a wild robbery. ass story. I was there. Okay, yes. I didn't rob it. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you robbed it. I'm not saying you robbed it. <laughs> Tell, but like, because uh, you know, you have all millions of dollars going through these little corner stores yeah, every day. Right. Stick up kids, wolves, professionals. They're yeah. professional. They would, they, they they, they would they be were, like the police stalking the joint. Right. And sometimes they would pretend they were the police. Wow. Did they actually go that far? Oh, yeah. Oh, they no. Were... They had patrol cars and everything. Wow. Well, you know about the wild cowboys. Of course. They, uh, uptown. Yeah. They, they would pose as police. Yes. They'd pull over yeah, dope blonde dealers. Yeah, blue-eyed guys, a right. black guy, a Spanish guy. They'd all come in. Yep. Yeah. Arrest yeah. you and then put you in a vacant building and yeah. call your people and say, I'm going to need 100000 right. by noon or yeah. this guy, yeah. you're, his head's going to be in a duffel yeah. bag. And they and they did it. Yeah, and they and did, they it. did it. Yeah, they did it. Yeah. So one of these crews tries to hit... One of Adam Adam's bodegas. But it wasn't. A, it was a stick up crew, not a not those guys. Not the Wild Cowboys. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, the yeah. stick In up fact, crew. I met the half of them. I know. I met all these wow. guys. I when I cause they, it was all the nineties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hit ninety two, and this they start coming in ninety two, ninety three, ninety four. Talk about coming into jail. Yeah, they started yeah. getting arrested, but right, right right after me. Right, you know? and uh, I met all of them, every single one of them. So tell us about uh, when these stick up kids try to hit Adam. So sore. they they hit him, and, and it wasn't their first time. They they went after him. Uh, was the first or second? I can't remember. Anyway, so I had, yeah, so I had moved Adam to different locations because I wanted control of his spots. So I suggested this spot or this spot because oh, right. I want to be able to I want to be able to see who's coming and going, and not be able to be laid on. So if you're on a busy two way street, you can be easily unaware. Yeah. But if you're on a one-way street, of course, you, see you everybody. know all the cars coming and who's going the right way and who's circled. Right. And who's stopped, who's pulled over. You can gauge the unfamiliar Correct. more quickly. Mm -hmm. And so we made some adjustments with him. And in one of these places in particular, we put him on. I didn't necessarily like the location, but there was a benefit to it, which it had to do with Baron was across the street in his old shop, and the, we knew the owner of this shop would allow Adam to take over the bodega and set up upstairs. Anyway, upstairs was perfect because it was a, an apartment that they can do a shoot straight down through. What is that? There would be a pipe line yeah. that can go straight from the upstairs apartment outside of the bodega through the, uh, through a private house yeah. into the bodega <laughs> with, the, with the merchandise, and right. they, then they shoot the money back upstairs. So you never really actually... <laughs> 
you never witness any transaction in the store. Right. The money goes up. Yeah. The, Comes down and you leave. Yeah. So no one has to move it around. You wow. have to walk out, expose yourself. Yeah. Here he's coming down the streets, coming down right. the block. It just whoop, whoop. Brilliant. No one ever touches anybody. It's like anything. that money at the, the drive through bank. banks. It's like the yeah. bank. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, oh, by the way, with these bodegas, that he would just buy out the owner in yeah. cash right there. Yeah, correct. And then he goes and retires yeah, on the yeah, island. Yeah, does what he wants. Nothing. Yeah, right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And there, nobody ever said no. It's too much money. Yeah, I mean, the offer was so good. The offer was sufficient. Yeah. They're, they're working every day. They're putting, you know, 400 in their pocket. Now they can put 75,000 in their pocket yeah. and they're gone. Yeah, you know? okay. So. Gotcha. So at this particular spot, uh, it's it sounds like strategically, yeah. it's very uh, well, it, advantageous. It, yeah, and, and it proved to be uh, so when we showed up. <laughs> right, right. Because when we showed up, we only we knew there was no one coming at us. Right. Because it was it was it was actually Atlantic Avenue, but it was it was it was um, three lanes in each direction. So, if you were to leave that bodega, you'd have to go only one way this way, right. unless you jumped the curb. Made a scene mm. and made a U turn yeah. and went the opposite direction. So you would have made a scene to right. leave the bodega. Right. It would have been like, because oftentimes a robbery is, goes unnoticed. For example, if I went into a store to rob the store and came out and got in the car, you wouldn't know. Of course not. I just leave. Unless someone says, he just robbed me. Mm. And you'd be going, who? Yeah. <laughs> right? But when a guy jumps a curb and makes a U turn and screeches out to get away, I think that looks like that might be the guy that might have robbed the place. Right. You know? So there's a telltale signs that can give things away. Now, did you have a cop or was it you yourself posted up guarding it, watching it? At that low time, yeah. uh, I had just left it. Oh. I had been gone about 15 minutes. Holy Because I would do my rounds. Right. And that would be in my rounds, I'd be covering the store. And I had just left the store. And I think I was at Baron's shop, which was directly down the block, about a mile. And the call comes in. Stick up at the bodega. And I'm like, you mother. And I don't know who it is yet. Of course, yeah. we're not there. And uh, we show up and we squelch the whole thing. Meaning? We got rid of the job. It didn't happen. Right. So you called it off. You're like, it was a. Yeah, 90 X ray, yeah. unfounded. It didn't happen. Yeah. It's a false call. <laughs> yeah. And then so many cops converge on the scene because it sounded like a real one. It's a bodega getting a stuck up, mm. stick up. That doesn't happen very often, that call. And so I had it all squelched. Everything was done. Mm -hmm. They were leaving. And some 11-year-old kid comes out with a shotgun. I says, officer, I found this. And this, it was to the sergeant. Like, oh. I, the cop would have been good. I would have, I yeah. give me that. Man. Yeah. Got it. But he, this, he handed it. Shot, the sergeant turns around and says, where was this? The kid says, it was on the, hall, in the hallway on the floor. Oh. So now he goes, search the building. Oh. So now I had it all taken care of. Now who left go, Who left the shotgun? The guys doing the robbery? Probably not. Probably the guys inside. They probably went and got the guns in case there was a return. Right, or right. Just whatever. Right, right. Maybe it was, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was posted up. Yeah. Maybe it was posted up right. in case someone pushed them in. They right. had a shotgun to reach for. Right. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, uh, that's something you could ask Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Then the whole thing got opened up, and uh, they went and they, they searched the whole building. And then <laughs> it's still not to be thwarted. I go upstairs because now I'm now I'm going back to the scene. By the way, how much work did did they make off with? So I'm going so I'm going back to the scene now because I left because I want now I, everything's cool, good. Everyone leaving? Let's go. Get, <laughs> just doesn't exist. <laughs> Fairy tale never happened. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's not happening. I'm looking. At Get away. Yeah. This is, uh, let's go. So, everybody go. Watch, follow me. Where I'm leaving. <laughs> if I'm leaving, you should all leave. <laughs> so, let's go. So, finally, I, I got to turn around and go back. I go back and I go upstairs. And uh, sure enough, there's a cop in the, in, the, in the apartment loading with bags of cocaine and money. Oh, no. So, I go, what are you doing? He goes, what? I, 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 he goes, I said, do you have a search warrant? <laughs> I said, do you have a search warrant to the cop? <laughs> How dare you? Yes. <laughs> he goes, no. I go, then what are you doing in here? Yeah. <laughs> we can't be doing Get this. Get the fuck out of here. This is Adam's work. Yeah, what are you doing? This is my boys. Uh, His cop puts the back and says, you're right. I don't have a search warrant. I says, you better go get a search warrant. But in the meantime. You're a very honest cop, yeah, Mike. Yeah, see? I yeah, get a search warrant. the Constitution. Yeah. The cop puts the <laughs> back. But then, so, so they got. They put the back. And what happens is 
They go upstairs from the bodega to get it, and the cops circled back. The sergeant and the other guys uh, circled back yeah. just to do a sweep, and the guys were, the guys walking down with a duffel bag full of cocaine and right. money. So they arrested. Was so it they Adam? They arrested the guy that you saw on the video with the glasses and the fake beard. Oh, that guy's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. He's amazing. He's no, no, no. A as a, as His a character, name is Elvis. Elvis. His name is Elvis. And Adam's cousin. Right. Right. <laughs> and he ended up turning state's evidence. Oh and the whole, no. Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck that yeah. guy. I'm what sorry. an amazing guy. Wow. No, as a character though, yeah. he was oh, yeah, real charismatic. Yeah. Then he so she said, and I heard quiet. Yeah, the whole story of how that robbery went yeah. is is yeah. crazy. But yeah. well, I thought they so so they didn't get everything. Clearly, if no, they, no, the, the the guys who did the robbery yeah. got about seven hundred thousand and a couple of bricks. I don't right. know how okay. they wanted the money. Right. They take anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cash either right. way. Right. But what was the easiest thing to get? Cash. So they got the money and they got some drugs, but they left behind some money and the drugs. Mm -hmm. So when they went and they. They went to clean out the guys from downstairs, went back upstairs to get the yeah. remainder to rob it from Adam and say <laughs> they took everything. Oh, yeah, ah, yeah, that's yeah. that's what was really happening right. there. They got caught by the cops coming down. And now they're coming to the precinct and the guy's looking at me. Elvis. I'm going. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Elvis, be cool, man. Don't be, start singing, you yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Don't Be you cool. start singing hitting the high notes. It's him. Yeah. It's him. Yeah. It's him. Me hermano. Is there police uh, hermano? Is there police <laughs> corrupto? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he started singing. He started singing. Yeah. How much work did they get him with? Coming out of those about five kilos and 150,000, something like that. Mm, I guess it's enough for it's enough for a 20-year bid, I guess. Oh, yeah. It's, you know? Yeah, they get it. were there any guns on him? Oh yeah. Oh okay. So yeah, you yeah. probably you probably get twenty. Yeah. Get a good get Dominican facing guy. Twenty probably. Facing twenty yeah. probably do ten, fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a bitch made move though. Uh, you know the guidelines pretty well, huh? So <laughs> I yeah. do. I do. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, so so that was a experience. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the the beginning of the investigation right. that led to you as Correct. well. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, how long did it take for? them to finally arrest you. Well, that was 87, so I got arrested in 92. Because that's five years. That's yeah. a long time. They had like a couple of weeks left of statute of limitations would have run out on Wow. Yeah. How, how did it take them so long? Because they weren't coming to get me. What do you mean? Like they didn't, they just ignored it? Was it was going to go away. It was going away. Ex Kenny got pinched. Explain that. Kenny got... Kenny, Kenny was your partner. Kenny was my partner who was retired on three-quarters disability living on Long Island that I got him a pension. He was living at home, retired, and he got bored, and he wanted to start selling drugs. So he calls me up and says, yeah, you know, my pension's getting eaten away. I need a little help. Uh, can you get me some bricks? Jesus. So, you know, I can get anything. So Right. Okay, okay, okay. In, the, in, this, in this interim, this five-year period, right. uh, is it a Fed case? that, that uh, It's got to yes. be, right? Yeah, it's a Fed, a Fed case. case yeah. um, well, the, the organization was big. So city cases and state cases, when it starts getting multi-layered, they start to bring the feds in because they can do deeper dives. Of course. And, and, they, and they can take their time. And they have and, unlimited and resources. A, and get a bigger case. And, yeah. get a, and then they take all the money anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 Now, and you're working with uh, Adam this entire time. Yeah. 87 to 92. No. But we have a relationship. What becomes of Adam? Uh, at some point, uh, I go to DR to chase them down for some money. Uh, they follow me. They strip search me. It's a whole big. It's a good. Show. It's a good. It's a good three, four shows on a TV right. series. <laughs> right. So why is he in the DR? Because he's on the lam a little bit. I got you. He's he's, he's playing, laying quiet. Right. Right. Because of all the shit that of just course. happened and the outgrowth of it. I get the word that Elvis is singing. I call him up. Let him know. He puts the word. Shut the f up. He sends money in, yeah. tells people how to shut up. Yeah. He takes care of the family, you know, right. sends money to his family. Switch everything hang in up. There, calm down, shut your mouth, yeah. stay back. Do they switch the spots up? No, they're out of business for now. Uh, so Diaz moves his business in different directions. He leaves the country. He's taking a break. Okay. He's taking a hiatus. Wow. Uh, Very rare. And the for funny a drug thing dealer. is, his spots still stay active because people fill in the gap. Yeah, and they're of not him. It's not him. It's crazy. Because his, his spot stays it's, hot. Yeah. You know, and that, it turns out it's the Bodega Joe, the owner, his son, who ends up ratting on me too. It just it wow. doesn't end. Wow. So who do you go to work for? Who do you go to work for? How do you I make money after Adam I don't. Leaves? I start making my own money. I start selling drugs. Wow. 
Here we go. It go. was leading it to it. Yeah. Leading to go. it. Okay, tell us about it. How much, who were you getting it from? How, how much were you moving? So initially who were your I was getting it from Adam on the cuff. And then... On front? Yeah. No, no, free. What is... Oh, on cuff. On the cuff. Free. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In lieu of like payment? Yeah, in lieu well, of cash? So, mo- mostly it was, uh, it was in a, bo- a bonus added to the payment. And then when the payments got cut because of all the robberies took place, mm-hmm. and you, had to, you can't clean a guy out when he's got no money. All right. So... I said, listen, just give me two, three ounces, you know, uh, which at that time probably cost him 200 an ounce. So it's costing him 600. I'm turning yeah. it into 1,500. Yeah. Who, who are you selling it to? Local people. Yes. Yeah, I, I got a, a real, uh, I got a, um, a lawyer. I, I got a, a liquor store owner. I got a couple guys that work the bars on Long Island. So mm-hmm. now all the bars on Long Island in my area become mine. Right. I, I start supplying them. Gotcha. Sorry. So it's, so it's, it's, it's good money, but it's not a lot of Coke. Three ounces is not, uh, no, you know. Uh, no, I mean I'm doing four hundred you know, bricks. I'm, I'm, no, no, but I'm doing maybe a little more than that. Probably six ounces a week, which yeah. is good money. Okay, yeah, it's so good. Money. You're making, uh, I'm making, I'm making four G's a week, two three grand a week. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. good. Yeah. So you're doing that. Are you are you looking out for other dope dealers? Or are you just no, move a coke? No, I'm just moving it. Okay, and yeah, and then I end up getting relationships with other people, and I find other avenues. And mm. so when this one fades away, that one does, and then I end up on an overtime foot post in the seven five. Wow, that, that's the worst post, is it not? No, I because I, I was transferred away. Yeah, and then one Christmas time season, they, they're asking people to go to East New York and work a foot post for overtime. Mm. It's called a robbery holiday season robbery overtime foot post because they want high visibility during the holidays right. for the police, so the people can carry their packages up and down the block right. without getting robbed, right. mostly. Anyway, and um, so I end up. Uh, Meeting my first night out, they wouldn't leave me alone. The sergeant was scratching me every like 15 minutes. I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting pissed. Like, what the f-? I'm inside counting cash with the dope dealer. I'm there 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm counting cash and, and, and weighing bricks with the dope dealer. I'm there 15 minutes. And he gives me his car. First, I, had been, I hadn't been in East New York in four, three years. <laughs> I'm there one hour. I got the, I got the <laughs> bodega owner giving me a Jetta. I got him giving me a Jetta. <laughs> it's an 86 Jetta. It wasn't brand new. All right. It was 89. That was a hot car, though. <laughs> oh, back 90. Then. It was 90. Yeah, it was a great yeah, I mean, that the car. Yeah. Jetta was. was a, it was a great car. That was, was four like. Four the... door, four door, blue velour interior yeah. Jetta. That was a ghetto gave, fabulous back in the day. Yeah, he gave yeah. it to me. Yeah. He gave me Hilarious. a car, and we made a deal on some, some merchandise. I said, uh, uh, What's your number? He goes, 17.5. I said, I'll give you 16. He said, Fine. Ah, so you're buying a whole brick. So now I'm getting bricks from him. Wow. I'm there one day. Not even a bad four hours. <laughs> God damn it, Mike. He just, he, he's like, his name was Compy. Com- Compy, where are you, Compy? You, he, he turned on me too. They all did. So, so all these dope dealers ended up telling the feds about you. Yeah. Did, okay, but how, but this is 90. So 92 is when it all goes down. Goes down. Yeah. So are the feds gathering information this whole time? Or the feds gather information every day of their life, but right. what it is is Kenny ends up slipping. right. So Kenny, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah so, so let's get back it, to so Kenny. It goes to Kenny. So so I'm out here floating around in the universe, right? With no problems. And then Kenny calls you. And then Kenny calls me, unbeknownst to Kenny and me, his phone's hot. Oh, wow. Because he sold to somebody who sold to undercover. Wow. So they trailed it back to Kenny. Then they hit Kenny's phone within a couple of days. They yeah. got his phones. Yeah. And they found out that Kenny was dealing with cops from the 73rd Precinct. They were robbing people in, in Brownsville in the 7th three, right. And they were bringing the coke home to Kenny to sell. As, as, as unfortunate as it would turn out, around Easter time, the Colombians are very religious. And they don't move cocaine around Easter time. I heard that. And around, they take the holidays off, too. They, 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 yeah. Yes. So the, what happens, this is the facts, from my knowledge. I could be wrong, but mm. and I've been wrong before, but what I've been told, they're very religious. They right. don't move cocaine around Easter. So anyway, so supply dries up, price doubles. Mm. So they come, who they call? Ghostbusters. Right? <laughs> so I'm on the phone making some moves. So I got the price. Let's. I, I, I could throw any number in the world. It don't matter. I, I got a, the better price than he could get because mm. he could never get it. What I could get it at. And these guys weren't talking to drug dealers. They were robbing them. So they right. couldn't get it at right. a price. Right. They had to go rob someone. And it was the supply was uh, lean. There's no dope so to So they rob. couldn't yeah. get it. So I ended up making a call for them. And now they got my phone eventually. Right. And they, uh, they're like, oh, this is Mike Dowd from right. the 75th. And they know. And him. they've been wanting me for years. Right. Oh. So once they found out that I was involved, 
it became massive because internal affairs has been docking me and putting notes in on me for years, but not being able to do anything. So what happens is this is how this case blows up. Suffolk County has a task force that's called the Joint State Task Force with probably a DEA liaison. Right. They have 89 people <clears throat> working this case. It's a big wow. case. I get hooked in now. They want to see where this leads. Which it wasn't very wide, my circle, because basically I was the pinnacle. Right. And a couple of people I dealt with, they, they, they ended up grabbing, the, which they all did okay, thank God. And now I'm in charge of Kenny's whole group, 53 people, who I don't know any of them. But because I supplied Kenny and Kenny supplied this group, I become the head of that group. That you know, meant you were a kingpin. I'm a kingpin. Uh, for, now, for the feds. Now, now I'm a kingpin. Yeah. Right. And Even though it's not that much dope. <laughs> Couple bricks, whatever. Oh, come on. Yeah. It's, it's, it's bull. Yeah. It's a story. It's a great story. Right. It makes great. Ink. Right. Of course. And so they start <laughs> tailing me for, I keep, now I'm finding them everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Feds. Feds and county. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going, this isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this Corvette now for a year and a half. And I've never had a woman, two good looking young girls pull up alongside me, wink and wave. Right. And they would pull that sh And the that's feds. what they did. Wow. And, and, and I mean, and, and, and it just became more, more and more obvious. I'm, I'm like, I know I'm not doing a lot of blow, but I was doing some. <laughs> yeah. Am I becoming paranoid? You're right. Am I <laughs> paranoid? It just got out of hand. Anyway, so P.S., uh, they take me down, and then we get out on bail. And uh, the, the county, the, the, the state took me down. It's, uh, so the Suffolk County and the state task force took me down. But what happened was this. New York City Internal Affairs signed 147 or 148 men to the case. Wow. To assist Suffolk County. They wanted you. They just said, we got to get you. Know, we got to do this. We yeah. gotta, we, that was like on the top of their food chain. Yeah. You know, and Giuliani at this time is now, not in. Oh, he's not in until no, 94. I get him in. What the f does that mean? I get him his job. How? As mayor? Yeah, I make him the mayor of New York City. You didn't know? No. I crowned him. I uh, anointed him. I anointed and coronated. coronated him. Yes. How? <laughs> they have a hearing in New York City called the Mullen Commission hearings, where I testify before the commission and tell them how I did this and how I got away with it. But it was run and instituted by Mayor Dinkins. So Dinkins was trying to show how he's cleaning up the police department and right. how I'm going to expose the corruption yeah. and that Mr. Mayor Dinkins is not the problem. It's just us white Irish guys from Long Island that are the problem. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And now that he's got this guy all jammed up in the feds, we're good. We took care of it. Right. And Dinkins and Giuliani faced off and Giuliani beat him. So in a way, you're you getting arrested and going down – was Very much changed. Giuliani's uh, gave him his job. Yeah, he's. I'm job. tough on crime. I'm cleaning oh, up the mob. I'm cleaning up, you know, crime. cleaning up these oh. mix from Long yeah. Island on the force. Yeah. Right. right. Wow. Well, look at so Giuliani now. I gave now. him a job, and I changed the police department all in one week. Wow. Look at you. You <laughs> wear many hats. I'm doing my <laughs> Ninety-two. You go down. How long did you bail out? Or they keep so you at I NBC? bailed out of the state, and then when the feds picked me up. <laughs> Nah, Ain't no bail. No, nah, I mean, yeah, if you want a million five, yeah, nah, yeah. I'll, I'll start my time now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start my time. I'll just start the time I'll, now. I'll, I'll play Just spades. start that clock. <laughs> I'm going to get in shape, I swear. I'll play chess. <laughs> I'm going to get back I'll in shape. I'll lift these water bags. Yeah. <laughs> well, they held you at Rikers? No, no, no. I was in Riverhead for a couple of days, bailed out, went back to Riverhead when they re-indict. Because, you know, they re-indict ah, you all yeah, the time. Course, they always re-indict you, especially when you're a cop in law enforcement. Oh, yeah, because if you're, you're a cop and you yeah, they can't send you into general population. Generally, no. Generally, Even though you would have been fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Maybe, you're maybe never not. fine. You're never fine, you're never fine initially. Right. Until you get a little salt and experience in jail. Did you? Did they send you to... Uh, did they, were MCC you, in a hole. Okay, so Nine you, months. So, oh. Brutal. Yeah. In the hole. Nine months in the 23 hole. and one. Yeah. One phone call a day? Yeah, not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Not but 23 bad. and one is bad, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who am I going to call after a while? <laughs> right. My ex wife to be? <laughs> so she broke up with you? Well, not right away. Did couple, any, she waited a couple hours. Who, <laughs> <laughs> who did uh, Did your family turn their back on you no. or did they stay down? No, they were good. Good. Yeah, they what stayed. about the, uh, what about other cops? Yeah. They, they stayed good. Yeah. They were, that's our brother. Yeah, yeah, that is. That's true. Our brother. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, they could be mad at me, but they're right. still not going to, they, right. I'm still their brother, you know, and, and, and that's how we treat each other. Did you take it to the box or did you cop out? Eventually, I, I fought him and fought him and then I had to cop a play. I mean, I, I fought him for two years. What were you facing? If Life. You for what? A Rico? Yeah. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. The statute is like, dude, yeah. they can give you life. I was for, facing life. Right. He offered me 34 years of my first plea agreement. It was 34. Were they trying to make an example of you? I think so. I think, I think it <laughs> might have been. 34 years. I said, to, well, I, I, excuse me. How, Time I, out. 34 years. Uh, is yeah. an offer? This is a plea? Like, that's not a f- Insulting. Plea? Yeah, yeah, it's insulting. That's a f- life sentence yeah. at, at 30. I was 30. One and maybe thirty-two wow. when they made their first plea offer. Wow, thirty-four years? Are you serious? And so, actually, it was like twenty-eight to thirty-four. My lawyer goes, "Don't look at the 28. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ! Thank you. Don't you hate those lawyers? I'm fir- watch, I'm a first timer. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that's not gonna go over well in front of a judge. Wow, <laughs> you're a cop. How, what do they have on you? How many dope sales? It was uh, the volume in the conspiracy. Which was how much? 500 plus. 500 plus grams? Kilos. Oh, wow. So they had you distributing that many kilos? Well, because I was tied to Diaz. Oh, wow. So they, they roped him in? They roped me into that whole conspiracy because wow. I was getting paid by them. Okay. So they still, so you were still taking money from Adam even as you were okay. dealing with Larry nope. on the hot phone? No. Nope. So, oh, they went all the way back, all the way back. to 86, yeah, 87. I continued, the, I continued crimes. God damn, dude. Ain't that Rico a mother? God damn it. God damn it. Like, how do I get this guy? Right. And then how I did- took money from drug dealers. Yeah. For Christ's sakes. I'm a good boy. Yeah, what I you, swear. What are you supposed to do? I'm a good boy. <laughs> I swear I'm <Yeah>. good. <laughs> <laughs> My mother loved me until oh, she found out about this. <laughs> so how did you get them down? How, how did you get the plea from 34 to 12 and a half? I just kept saying no. Just by holding on, right? Yeah, no. That's what they do. They keep you in there, try to squeeze you, yeah. torture you, because yeah. it is torture. Yeah, yeah. And and they try to say, oh, okay, I can't take yeah. it. Yeah, well, they try to financially, financially break you, right, right. which they're trying to do to Ooh. President Trump right now. Yeah. They're trying to break him financially. Good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah, I keep mean, trying, thankfully, boys. I yeah. mean, thankfully, he's a bill. Listen, you don't have to like the guy, and, and I'm not, I, I don't right. advocate, but could you imagine if, it, if he didn't have that money? Right. They're busting. That's how that, yeah. everybody under him who's like worked in his his, his administration. Mm. Yeah, I mean, these I know. guys took a job to help the country. Right, right. Whether you like the guy or not, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's not even really a bankrupting thing. It's a politically motivated. Yeah, no, but you know, it seems more those serious. People. Oh, right. Yeah, the underlings. Like the guy took a job. He went from being, let's say, a state senator, and and uh, I want to be the head of your urban development program, mm, yeah. or even Doctor Carson. It's funny they haven't gone after him, even though they disparage his credit. Ben Carson? Yeah, they haven't tried to arrest him. I mean, mm. he was just an advocate like all the other guys they arrested. Right, right. He's an advisor. Lock him up. Right. They didn't lock him up. That's right. funny, isn't it? Let's save this Suspicious. for the Patreon. We're trying to get this episode monetized. <laughs> <laughs> then cut that out. <laughs> yeah. Leave it in. Leave it in. Um, so, so you just held on two years. That's brutal. Um, and, and they finally, did you have a good lawyer? Listen, he was as good as you could good be. As, you could as be. good as could be. So you got 12 and a half. Signed for 12 and a half. Signed for... Or you tw- did 12 and a half. Yeah. I signed for 12 and a half to, to 15 and a half. Do, wait, is the feds sentence you that way? The sliding so, scale? So so the, 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 the... I thought that was just the state. No, no, no. The, the, the plea, the number, the guidelines called for 12 and a half to 15 yeah, and a half. Yeah, yeah. That was the guideline. Right. So my guideline could have given me 12 and a half or 15 and a half. Yeah. So when I went and got sentenced, the judge gave me smack in the middle, 14 years. Right. And you did about 12 and a half. I did 12 Which and is half. 85%. Correct. That's Fed time. Yeah, 87, whatever. How many facilities were you in? Started out in MCC, New York. Ended up, uh, they, they, they jetted me down to Mariana, Florida. So you go through a couple of transfer places, yeah. you know, not con air. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you're locked up with all these hoods? Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. It's, That's so I funny, dude. I was in a dude. jet. I was in the Leah. They took me in the Leah. Oh, you got the, I got the Leah. <laughs> you got the jet. I got the Leah. I got, got the Leah. I did, P- get to, I did get treated a little special. You call the PJ, the private <laughs> I jet. Was, I was specially treated. Don't yeah. you worry. <laughs> Black box. Stuff. Anyway, so I, I got the, the Leah. And uh, and then, of course, after that, I didn't get the Leah anymore. But anyway, <laughs> and I moved from from Mariana, Florida. I did four and a half, five, maybe five, six years, five and a half years. I Sounds don't know. nice. Mariana was nice overall. 
So they were like Overall. medium, medium facilities. It, this is a high, but, but really, yeah, it's a high. But it's, so, but you're not walking mainline as a yeah. cop, are you? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. First day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I went. I went. From the hole, I went to Mainline in in, in 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 MCC New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when they transferred me to Mariana, there's probably there's probably a hundred cops in Mariana doing really. Time. Okay. Yeah. So, of so no one knows that. <laughs> why? Because they, they're all deep. You know. Yeah. They're not public in the front page of the paper. Although many of them were Miami cops. The Miami River cops were there with me. Right. So that everybody knew them. And they ran the place, you know. Wow. Oh yeah, no. Just like just like just like, they like were regular inmates. Regular inmates. Regular inmates. Wow. They ran the, 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 the weight room. They ran this. They, you know. Did they? Did there were Cuban guys? They were with the Cuban guys. You know, of they course. all took care of each yeah. other, oh, bro. Oh my god. And they were in there for taking down taking big, taking big, dope big numbers. and taking yeah, big yeah, numbers, yeah. 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 Did they actually move drugs? Roman Rodriguez, the whole crew. Did they run drugs in prison too? No. 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 They were they were legit. They they they. Man, they, they were legit they, they dirty were good cops. guys. They were yeah. dirty. You know? Right, right. So they didn't. Uh, well, they grew up with Willie Falcone and Sal Mabluda. Yeah, right. They grew up with. They were their That's best crazy. friends from high school. Mm -hmm. So when they hit it big, and you know, what are you gonna do? It's hard. Gonna you know, do. How do you return? Just give your me friends? some money. Yeah, come on. Yeah, just give me some feed money. Me. Feed me. God, can't this country just accept a little corruption, a little squeeze? Yeah. But you know what? They want to monopolize corruption. Yeah, they, they want to say, it. "I want. We want state corruption. We want to say, I'm a. I'm a politico." You donate as much to my campaign as yeah, you can, you can do and when I wants. get in, yeah, you can do and that's not corruption, though. No, no. But I just want to wet my beak a little see, bit. Start, and, uh, see, model, you're getting, model. You're going off. see, there's not enough Italians in the <laughs> government. That's why. You know what I mean? Um, so, okay, wow. I mean, Jesus Christ. What have you done with the with the rest of your life since then? So, yeah. So, uh, listen, I've I've had a good life, right? I mean, yeah. they, they think about it. I yeah. mean, we're sitting here talking today. I, I, most guys that, that lived my life probably wouldn't be here. Right. I don't mean in this interview. It'd be here on the above this, yeah. this, this part of the <laughs> this part of the earth. The right? moral coil. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. yeah the, where, where every day I still have choices. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Sometimes it's limited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the choices. Yeah, so, and I... Uh, right now, I have a lot of things going on. Uh, in fact, before I got here, I left a meeting about discussing potential activity with a TV series and um, and and a movie. And I, I, actually, yesterday I got a call from a cop from Philadelphia who wants to team up with me and do a podcast, which might be a nice mix. Yeah, like the good guy and the bad guy, right. but, but staying from the cop world, that might be a nice mix. You know, I get that. I actually, it's not the first time I get it quite often. What happens is I move around so much, and I'm really like one of the best guests. You are, you are. This has been a the really finale. Good guest. To a, so yeah. I, I find that it, it's less of a burden on me to have to run a show than I can be a guest, and and I do well running, mm -hmm. uh, getting get invited yeah. to shows and stuff like that. And it keeps me relevant. Right, right. How do they find you? I mean, if you're not, if you don't keep yourself relevant, you guess what? You're not relevant. Right, right. of course. Because no one else is going to do it. How did how did Netflix find you? How did they find this story? Oh no, so it was a documentary. It wasn't done by Netflix. It was done by uh, a Jewish guy, Eli Holzman. Who what? watched the Marlin Commission hearings when he was 18 years old? Oh no! Shit. And it was the first show ever broadcasted on New York One News. It was their opening day, and the first thing they ever broadcasted was me. Wow, that's a scoop. Yeah. So, so Eli, the young kid, was watching it from his home in Queens, and he was fascinated by it. Fast forward 20 years later, he goes, or well, it might have been 18 years later, but around 20, and he goes. I wonder what they ever did with this. So oh, he looks it up. Wow. He puts his guys on it. Because yeah. Eli Holzman is considered the, the king of uh, reality TV. He's done Undercover Boss. Everybody knows that show. Oh, okay. no. Oh, he's a whale. Yeah. Okay. The runways, uh, uh, the runway model R runway shows. Runway bride, no. Yeah, it's a movie. Uh, well, all of them. Right. All the, he, was the, he had five, 15 to 20 reality shows that made it really big when they first started, like oh, the Gotti okay. Boys, which I'm not right. saying that was one of his shows, but he had yeah. all those yeah. reality shows. Oh, so he's killing it. He, he made something. He was killing it. He made it. good. He did good, and then he calls up and contacts me right. through his people, right? and we set up something up. And, and then Netflix bought it from him. Netflix, I think they rented it. Yeah, know, or licensed they, it. They licensed yeah. it for three yeah. years, which is- Where is it now? Uh, it's, I think it's, it's on Tubi. I think Tubi. No, oh, that's a- yeah, Tubi because I wanted to go home and rewatch it. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 a, it's a great watch. Now, did you get a little bit of you get a few shekels a little, for it? A little, but not enough. Yeah, never, you never yeah, get enough. No. So that's why I'm trying to make something happen right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And did, a, did you ever have kids? Um, yeah, I have two boys and four grandkids. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all in this uh, just happened, right? Yeah. I saw it was such a great deal. I didn't have to raise them. Right? Oh, dude, this is amazing. <laughs> I didn't have to raise them. <laughs> this is the blueprint. And they love me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> have kids, spawn, do your evolutionary do your duty, and then go do a bid. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
And and they're good kids. They, wow, they really that's awesome. Are. Little, they've they've had a rough gig. gig right. You know? They they they're what they're my legacy, right? Right. So, and they've got some. They've dealt with some issues themselves. Let's mm. put it that. I don't want to put their personal business yeah. out there, but they're good guys, you know. And I, I, it, it, this is a touching moment for me by now. We, we just took our first picture together, because uh, because like everybody gets together for a wedding, a christening, a bar mitzvah, whatever, <laughs> whatever yeah, it is, okay. right? Uh, an anniversary. We all take pictures together. But we had our first actual picture together yesterday, or day before yesterday. Well, the three of us were just sitting together having a burrito at Bubba's Burrito in Islip. Hey, that's a free plug. <laughs> Bubba's Burrito's banging. Wow. Banging place. There you go. If, if you're you on go the out island. to Islip, yeah. yeah, no question. East Bubba, East. you owe me, mother. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, really banging place. Wow. And, and, uh, uh, and we sat there, and I looked at her, and I says, we got to take a picture here. Right. Because we've never actually done this. Yeah. Like most guys say, I want to go out for a beer with my dad and sit down. And we've yeah. never actually done this, the three of us together. Wow. Because my son's in California. The other one's on Long Island. They become cops? No, no, no. Thank God, right? No, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know what? I, I wouldn't. I would have been okay with it, right. but I, 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 I preferred that they did it because it, their career would have been really difficult, right? You know, being their, their your son. Uh, yeah, yeah, this would have been difficult, and um, but I feel bad that that was maybe denied in their head too. Mm. If, they, if they wanted that, I feel like they probably said, oh, "I don't want to be a cop." My dad was. He got all jammed up. And, yeah. You know, so, yeah. but. One of the things that's interesting, they actually get treated fairly well by the police when they get pulled over. I don't. <laughs> I don't, but they do. Uh, this is they, like the cops have some compassion for them. Right. Oh, that was your dad? Yeah. <laughs> How was he? Uh, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, that's I, fair. I got some, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah you know, because yeah. they're a com- little compassion in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you my funny story. My first, my first time I actually got pulled over, I was coming. I can't believe this. I'm coming. I shouldn't say my first time because I've been pulled over maybe a dozen times in the last 10, 15, 20, 20 years now. Do they pull you over still, like intentionally? No. Like he, okay, no, no, okay, no, okay. I okay. say that. You're I just mean, a crazy driver. I'm a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. No, I was a cop. Oh, no. You really never were a cop. You were bad. Okay. Anyway, so I'm coming over the, sta- the, 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 the Guinea gangplank. What's it? Staten Island? Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, there we go. Oh, uh, the Verrazano. The Verrazano. <laughs> the Guinea the, gangplank. Yeah. Well, that's what they call it, right? Uh, it's great. Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, my, uh, my Italian friends, they know. Yeah. <laughs> They'll tell you. You put your wife beater on, you go over to Guinea Gangplank. <laughs> so anyway, so actually I was coming over from Jersey into Staten Island and I'm, I'm hitting 440 and I'm making moves. And and when you come off, it's 65, 70 in Jersey, right? Mm. When you hit Staten Island, it's 45. Yeah, it's cold over there. It's the breeze. No, it's 45 degrees, 45 uh, miles an hour. Oh, Oops. The breeze too. <laughs> <laughs> the breeze slows down. It's been a long day. So now, yeah. So I slow it down, but not f- fast enough. And the cop pulls right in behind me, and pulls me over, and he gets out of his car. Now you got to realize he's got these stripes that I've never seen on on cops today. They wear these stripes mm. on their sleeves. Now we had them in the patrol guide when we were young cops. We no, no one wore them because no one gave it. Right. But I see this guy walks up with his stripes on his sleeve, and I'm looking at him. And I'm like, "What is this? <laughs> what, what is this, corporals? And whatever? I don't know what these are, but I've seen them." And they're the stripes that you wanted. They're the well. These are the stripes that give you longevity. Every stripe is five years. This guy had five or six of them on his sleeve, wow. so he'd been around. So he pulls me over, license registration. I go, <laughs> hand him my license, Michael Dow. <laughs> he goes. I'm like, oh boy, I don't even know what, I don't even remember what I said to him. I might have said, I used to be on the job. (laughs) 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 I might have said, I don't remember. And he comes back and he goes, he looks at me and he goes, I was on the job when you got jammed up. Wow. I said, yeah, that, yeah, uh." he goes, Slow it down. Have a good day. Be nice. careful. There you go. There you go. And, and, and I bet it was m- nice. And yeah. most cops are, are most cops like that. No, if they know you and, and know I your story. S- I would say that they probably would be. Mm-hmm. It might be against their inherent grain to be kind to me, but if they take a moment and think, you know, the guy's all champed up. Yeah. He lost his right. career. Yeah. He went to prison. Right. You know, he, you know, I'm a knock around guy. What did yeah, I do? Yeah, I, yeah. I went a little fast. Can you give me a break? You know what I mean? Yeah. Most guys are probably going right. to give me a break, but not everyone. Right. Yeah. Well, because they don't work in an environment that you worked in. They don't know what it's like yeah. to be in the hood. They're starting to know. Yeah. They're starting to know. Oh, really? It's starting start, to get rough out there? They're starting to know. 
they're starting to realize. I get calls all the time. Yeah. I get them all You're the time. You're talking about like- Local guys now calling me or sending me messages. What? I don't blame you. This is getting ridiculous. What's we the, can't do our job. Right. This is dangerous. What's the worst precinct now, do you think, in the city? In the five boroughs? Well, the, Brooklyn 7-5 is still the worst. Yeah. yeah. East uh, New York. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brownsville, uh, yeah, East still New York. Worst, yeah. That whole wow. section there, but I would I, and I, I would say that's it in the city. Yeah. But you may have something in Harlem, but not well, really. But the Bronx, it seems like everybody's getting shot there. The Bronx, the, you know, the, the Bronx is very condensed. Mm. It's a, you know, it's a lot of high rise condensed right. situation. Right. So people elbow you, you shoot them quick. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's no room in them to spread out. <laughs> Do you? Last question. Do you think cops are on the take anymore? Does it happen at all? It still anymore? happens, but it's less and less. All right. Yeah. Who's who's doing the payoffs? Who's running the city when it comes to dope? Uh, I mean, you could get the Mexicans. Uh, right. The Mexicans right. and Guadi, you know, the Guatemalans, the Mexicans. Right. right. The, uh, I don't know about the Venezuelans because right. they're from a different uh, culture. Right. Right. But yeah, yeah. Uh, MS-13 was doing a lot of it, you right. know. So, you know, there's a lot of infiltration right, now with the right. Mexicans. And, 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 and I don't mean to be slanging Mexicans. No, you're not. You're I not. love... Of course. No, no, no listen. No, I, I have a Mexican friends right. that aren't slinging, right. you know. But uh, I have Guatemalan friends that I work with, you know. Because you know, you, if you work in the trades, you work with these people. Right. And they're hardworking. Yeah, people. they're great. But, but they're also the kingpins. But, they I control mean, the I mean, supply you know, now. They, they, yeah. they control everything. So, yeah. uh, and they put their people in places throughout the right. cities. And, and, they and probably, it's st and it's still maybe it may be being distributed by the local black guy yeah. or a local Hispanic guy right. or some white guy's got his own little internet site. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Keep it clean. They're selling dope on the internet <laughs> yes, now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not in the dope game, so right. I, I don't right. know it as well. But I right. know how it operates. Right. Right. I mean, I. People talk to me, right? Of course, but if they're if cops are on the take, it's it's hush hush, and it's it's not institutionalized like it was it back wasn't, in the sixties you know, through it the eighties. It was acceptable, right? I wouldn't call it institutionalized. It wasn't as acceptable back yeah. then. It was all right. Just don't say nothing, right? He's that to, guy. Yeah, right. Today it's like you wouldn't want them to know, no, like or have a clue. It's very individualized. Very very right. individualized. Small right. pocket. Right. I've, I've heard some recent stories. Right. That guys are still getting paid somewhere, mm. but uh, I don't know the depths or the details. Right. So, right. and I don't want to know. You know. Michael Dowd, where can they find you, brother? Do you have an Instagram? Do you I have, have Instagram. A... The didn't that, is that how you found? You? No, I found it through through some guy I never met. Oh. It was like a Baron. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It was like a, yeah. You the know? Mike Dowd on Instagram. Yeah. The Mike Dowd on Twitter. I hardly go on X uh, much anymore. Do but you have Do you have a book? Uh, I don't have. You know, listen, I'm not selling anything. I do have T-shirts. Okay. I, I oh, I have one in the bag. Maybe. I, I, Good. You got a website or anything? You know what it is? I, I basically just meet people through Instagram yeah. and Twitter and, yeah. and, and, and Facebook and, and they, they they ask for a shirt. But I used to have a website, but I'm gonna and I'm gonna rekindle it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, go follow them on Instagram. That's what yeah. I would say. That's the lowest barrier to entry. And right. then like let's get your show made, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? well, it's, it's, listen, it's time. I, dude. It's it's I'm tirelessly working at it right now. Yeah. As we yeah. speak, yeah. we're on the cutting edge of big things. And this writer strike really isn't helping right now. It's not helping. It'll be yeah. over by the end of the year. I I think, so, I think it might be over at the end of this week. Really? That's what the birdie says? Or, or January. Right. It's either going to be now, right. within the next 10 right. days, right. or January. Okay. Because if it don't happen now, yeah. they're just going to cancel everything. We'll use this episode and try, if it helps, if this, you, because, you know, people in Hollywood are yeah, stupid. Yeah, they don't yeah. read nothing. If this helps, yeah. then but God bless Let's you. Use it. it. Yeah. Um, we're going to switch over to the Patreon just for some quick little chit chat. We'll probably talk about, probably talk about the text you sent me the other day to get your real feelings on Joe Biden. <laughs> if you haven't figured out his, oh. Mike Dowd's feelings yeah, on Joe, Joe Biden. I love you, Joe. We're going to switch Joe. over to Patreon and we're going to talk about it. I love you, my brother. Patreon.com. My, my brother, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Joe. patreon.com slash The Connect Show. This has been Mike Dowd, one of the greatest interviews that's happened on The Connect, and uh, I'm not surprised. Tell me the greater one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go after him. Where yeah. is he? <laughs> it's you, unique. unique. He's unique. up in Harlem is right he, now. I want to Yeah, I know I'll introduce you guys. We've spoken. Yeah. We've spoken. Okay, guys, take care. We'll see you on the Patreon. Peace. Peace.